Bobby Arnold's new new Russell Brand on Six Music. That was Arcade Fire, neighbourhood number three. For that, we had the Buzzcock. Something's gone wrong again. I'm here with Matt Morgan. He's in charge of the switches. Hello there, Matt. I didn't understand a word of all that you just said. Don't just, worry about just it. It's noises. not for you. Just noises. It's not for you. Cockadee lock. Brandy, brandy. <laughs> Come on, Trev. Are you all right? I'm all right. We've been in Scotland, but we're back now. Did you like it Scotland, Matt? I did actually. Yes. I don't know if I've ever uh, mentioned it, but I've got some Scottish heritage. Sure, and really, <coughs> you went. Yeah. Oh, Matt dragged us round the old tartan shops. Oh, my, I've got Red Marklin. I've got Red Marklin. <laughs> like it was Bob's. It was a tartan. Didn't you? Yeah, I bought a scarf. Yeah, well, it's annoying. And what about, we had to go into a fudge shop and buy some fudge for Trev, didn't we, Trev? We didn't have to do that at all, did we? Because I don't like fudge. Goes, do you want some <laughs> don't say that you don't like fudge, Trev. Say day is night. Say black is white. But don't <laughs> you, Trevor, eat your fudge, Trev, lock. Claim not to like fudge when you so evidently eminently love fudge. Eat your fudge trip! That was lovely fudge, wasn't it? It was really quite nice. Okay. Like it was fudge. too rich for me. That fudge was quite nice. We're going to have a lovely show today. This is what you might call a pre-recorded show, trapped in a little bubble. We are not here now in our lives. This is not Sunday morning. I'm in Marrakesh having the sort of holiday that Joe Orton would describe as disgustingly decadent and gay. But muscle, I would describe muscle. as lovely. You're what? not going to tell people where you've gone on holiday. Why? Because they could come and find you. Who's going to go to Marrakesh to find me? Well. The tabloid newspapers that have recently photographed our condom strewn flat <laughs> in Edinburgh. <laughs> we came back from Edinburgh. The idiot who lives above that bar gave out, uh, gave out our details to the Sun. Let the Sun newspaper come in and photograph Trevor's <laughs> sex debris. <laughs> All of us. Trevor, Trevor Locke. At least King I was in the wild France. Slept on the on the sofa. You I had nothing to do with that, I've just drank booze. Yeah, you're a good, honest, decent, filthy little person, <laughs> <laughs> Matt Morgan. That's the sickest twist of all. Yeah, that person, like, the, the pro Provotos ain't been in the sun yet, but like, you know, but... The but, Provotos? The Provotos. The Provotos. <laughs> it's a new word, it's a <laughs> made by Kodak. The Provotos are available. What, um, what, that's not a story though, is it? Some condoms were found in a sex addict's house. <laughs> 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 but I am not! A sex addict. No, you're not, dear. I'm a sex bird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sex inspector, sex instructor. First Take lesson for me. Off, you sex bird. Who in God's <laughs> hello, Captain Sex Bird here? I've turned that little thing off. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, that person. What an absolute prank! That that, guy was it definitely him? him? Definitely. How do you know? None of the girls who were left sleeping there. No, it was definitely that like, like, the sun into photograph. It might not have been in the paper because we're pre-recording this. This might that might so people we might be the first people to admit this. People they might not know that they've been around, but they came around apparently they were contraceptives left over the place, which is good. I, like I was asked for a statement and the statement I gave was and anyone who knows me will be aware I'm a keen balloon animal enthusiast. Once I've made these balloon animals, I like to have sex with them. But only safe sex. Rub her up! Wanna try? I said that. Good Thank statement, isn't it? Heavens for that. That is a safe thing to say. Safe thing to say. Also, yeah. why not have safe sex? Good to have safe sex. Role model for safe I sex. I remember when they showed those pictures of the Queen's breakfast table. Oh, uh, no. This hardly compares, does it? <laughs> what was on the Queen's breakfast table? Condoms. Just really rubbish things, like <laughs> Love <-aids>. Tupperware box. <laughs> Tupperware box full of condoms. <laughs> Really? No. Trevor, did you say that the Queen Mum had love, love eggs, eggs on her table? <laughs> Not love eggs. <laughs> lovely eggs. <laughs> lovely <laughs> eggs. Lovely poached <laughs> 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 eggs. Just, just, just poached <laughs> eggs for Her Majesty's <laughs> mouth. Love <laughs> eggs for Her Majesty. <laughs> love <laughs> eggs for Her Majesty's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> lovely <laughs> eggs for Her Majesty. <laughs> Pop them in your mouth, love. We're losing eggs. Right. <laughs> 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 We're driving people away. <laughs> so anyway, today we are going to be answering all your questions what are on the six music website, all yeah. sorts of, look at Matt and Trev shuffling papers like Trevor McDonald. All <laughs> oh, the questions <laughs> bit now! He's like excited about the questions bit, this pair of absolute twerps. Oh, it's questions about our lives! So, uh, yeah, all questions on, uh, on the website about asking us stuff. Matt and Trevor have siphled through them, God knows. Siphled? <laughs> siphoned! Yeah, siphoned. Siphoned. Listen, mate, yeah, you don't know the word cipher. It's not about word cipher yet. It's a new word. Everyone's using it around my way. You ciphered that yet, they say. So I've ciphered through these questions. There's all sorts of them. We'll be answering those questions over the course of this broadcast. But before that, why don't we... Should we listen to Aerosmith? 
Please, yes. Okay, we will, but like, there's no point texting us. If you do, so you can text us questions or something and we'll answer them in the future. We will still be doing Trevor Locke's Sonic Enigma. We will still be doing Matt Morgan's Cultural Review, will we? What are you going to review culturally? Um, we can do that Ron Muick exhibition. Okay. Right, so Matt's going to culturally review Ron Muick. Uh, but you better do a list, Matt. Why don't you do a list? Models, dummies, art, someone done a blow-off in the lift. Things like that. What a silly man. <laughs> what a silly man you are, Matthew Morgan. So, okay, yeah, you can text us if you want, but remember you'll be te texting the concept of nothingness on 64046 or email rosses.6music at bbc.co.uk because I'm in Marrakesh having my Joe Walton style holidays. Yeah, you two are on holiday and I'm still in England. Matt's working on our new working. Channel 4 show, Russell Brand's Got Issues. Trevor Locke will be seen on screen in that. Matt Morgan will be playing characters. It's going to be a great show. But now, why the hell don't we listen to Aerosmith, Mama King, 64046, BBC 6 Music, Mama King. Bam! Ah, that was Aerosmith. Those are the Aerosmith Roonies. Matt, did you like that? Yes, I like that song. Good, isn't it? You can't always ask me that. Why you know, not? Well, you know I like it. I can ask you a question, can't I? What is what's the world come to when one man can't ask another man questions without <laughs> fear of reprisal? What are you trying to create? A state of terror? It's Russell Brand on Six Music. S speaking of asking questions. Oh, right? hello, look at that for a link. Matt Segway Morgan. <laughs> speaking of asking questions. Which we were. About asking questions, which we evidently just was out of our brain boxes. So these are questions that have been up on the Six Music website that. No, that no, people, people could submit questions on the Six Music website. Oh, yeah. 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 It's not the website itself asking questions. No. no. Like the machines are turning against us. Why did you make me? <laughs> if you love me so much, why didn't you give me a nappy? I've just done a cyber what's it? <coughs> <laughs> That's the kind of question it might ask if a baby internet actually did come to life. What a try. <laughs> come on in, Matt, what's some of these questions? I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, ask a question oh, then. He's He's tweeted. Tweeted. Give me some big it's stupid it's like big intake of breath you did. And now it's the Harold Pinter <laughs> radio show, The Homecoming by Matt Morgan. <laughs> Someone might want to go upstairs and give my wife a cuddle. Tick tock. TikTok, yeah. TikTok, time passes. Ask a question then, Russell. Maximals. Here's a tip. Don't say everything that's in your head. <laughs> <laughs> breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, what were your first impressions of each other when you met? And do you think this shuffling, Trevor? <laughs> Stop shuffling! What were your first impressions of each other when you met? And do you think the same about each other now? <laughs> that question goes to Trevor. <laughs> that, that's for you, Trevor. Like, what, what, do you do? what did you make of me? I don't me? remember meeting Trevor. I remember meeting you. What happened? I met you. He made me meet you. Uh, what we did I tell you about Matt before we met him? On radio, you can't go he and you. Yeah, yeah you have okay. to Russell and Matt. Trent. Okay, Russell and Matt. It's a rule called It's Only Audible, Not Visual. Okay, I remember meeting you, Matt, because I was out in the park with uh, Russell and we just done some filming in the park and he said why don't we go to see the dirty pretty things do their night at coco and i said all right and then i went along and then we bumped into you there and you looked all grumpy and angry why i don't know but you just did grumpy. you were so quite sullen and you went all right mate like that and i went all right and uh oh this is a good story yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's when not a Carl story Brown i'm just telling you that's stage. probably why you didn't remember why it that, i haven't met you before Dirty Pretty Things time. What's no. You no I what don't are your know. first impressions? Say something that makes this anecdote interesting. Yeah, don't make me up to be grumpy and I'm happy. <laughs> oh, I, I thought, what a happy little chirpy whistling <laughs> fella. He came skipping down the street with your skipping rope, you offered me a sweet, and you asked me if I wanted to have a go on your rocking course. Rocking oh. course? <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is a lovely course. Well, for today we're going to study motorhead. Come on, put your trousers on, you dirty devils. Oh, I actually do. I remember when I first knew Trevor and I thought he didn't, I thought he was dressed like that for like not a laugh but <laughs> it wasn't like your normal clothing well, do you think you'd like been to a 1950s recreation day what do you no, mean, I actually like what? think you look like an 80s dad one of the sort of harangued dad <laughs> who's come home from work and the kids are everywhere and he's got like uh -huh. sort of right, a flustered estate agent bang yeah that sort of thing oh blimey the kids when was that Jane Jane come downstairs the kids are eating the carpet <laughs> Jane Jane Oliver's on. been sick on his lap <laughs> That kind of a bad <laughs> Jane, Jane, how long have these fish fingers got to be in for? <laughs> Jane, Jane, I mean these fish fingers ain't for. Jane, 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 <laughs> Jane, Jane, the thought of fish fingers. <laughs> Jane, Jane, the memory lingers. <laughs> Trev, if someone don't start talking about meeting me within the 10 seconds, I'm I met to Russell resign. at MTV and I thought, 
I hate that man. No! I did! Why? Why? Not on the aeroplane. The first time I, I saw you from a distance. From a distance. And you were going, oh, get out, oh, stop it. Yeah, hello. Oh, no. and that's a form of bullying. Like that. People were shouting at you from above. Dan, you were at the kitchen bit. Mm. And you were shouting out, and I thought, I don't like him. Why? And also, you'd written on your arm, this is my tattoo. Funny. Funny oh, joke. dear. I, I thought he was a right old shaft, and he was all tanned. And all sort of like a pretty boy, wouldn't you then? I had that mad hairdo, all yeah. like a cockatoo hairdo. And then that's so I thought, oh no, I don't like him. And then we were stuck on an aeroplane. He was meant to, you were meant to be a business class, but they p booked you back, you know, in the economy with me. <laughs> and I had to sit next to him, and he had these snails. I think we told the story. Giant snails I had then. But he, and then we talked about comedy and stuff, and I thought, oh no, he's all right actually. And then we went for a meal in Dublin. I was embarrassed because he wore a vest just, and a little pair of shorts. <laughs> I thought everyone thought we were a gay couple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our times have changed. Oh, I don't wear shorts anymore. People still think we're a gay couple. Them some giant African snails were nice. I took them all around the country. Them giant African yeah. snails. Giant they were. African they was. Snails I reckons. Got them in Brixton Market. They were huge when I travelled around the country with them. And then realised I couldn't give them the home mm -hmm. they needed. No. I left them in the Hilton Hotel. But yeah. didn't you, you ordered them room service of lettuce? Yeah, I got them some lovely lettuce, but it did come in hollandaise sauce, which I think was a bit too salty. They didn't <laughs> like it. But and then what happened was, right? Yeah. I, was, I was doing this, like, I was promoting Jackass when Jackass came to this country, and I was in the great big corn exchange thing or something in Leeds, right? And like presenting this thing, getting all these people to eat as many hard boiled eggs as they could. And the PR woman from uh, like, in the middle of a shopping centre, hundreds of people gathered around, stop touching your mic, Trev! I hundreds moved it because he's wheezing into stop it. Stop wheezing, what's wrong with you, wheezy? You stupid sleazy wheezy, <laughs> right? <laughs> so he's a wheezy here! So, uh, like, I was in the shopping centre, hundreds of people gathered around, making these people eat boiled eggs till they vomited. It was sort of like some sort of jackass to ride yeah. promotional offer. And I'd, uh, like, and I'd left them snails in the Hilton Hotel room, and uh, this woman, like the PR woman, comes to me over the telephone and goes, Russell, it's that I've got the West Midlands Police on the phone, no, the North Yorkshire Police on the phone just to discuss, uh, they've been speaking to the RFPCA, apparently you left some snails in your hotel room, some giant African snails, do you want to take the call? Said, no, I don't, because how can that go well? <laughs> The RSPCA, snails, it's ridiculous. But those snails are sold them. for food, aren't they? Yeah, they would have been just that. So you've, you've helped them. Okay, How's he helped them? We don't I gave them the life of Toffs, Trev. <laughs> they lived a lovely life. One was called Wiggins, I called it Wiggins. And yeah. what was the other one called? The other one, we never knew its name. So how did you carry it around? Did they just sit on your shoulder? because they were inside the shell a lot of the time unless you left them to relax. But why would you carry them around? They lived in a shoebox with all these other trinkets. Yeah, and it was in the middle of that foot and mouth crisis, right, and I was carrying these giant snails around. People were suspicious. How hard was their shell? Dublin, quite hard. So it would be difficult to crush them accidentally? What do you mean, Are you plotting killing them already? Well, they're how difficult it would be to kill them? yeah. Right, okay, let's have a little listen to the yeah, yeah, Trev is already trying to kill I'll tell you, after this record, I'll tell you about my first impressions of Trev and Matt as a pair of absolute ninnies, which hasn't changed a jot to this very, very day. Let's listen to the yeah, 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 cheated heart. There the yeah, 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 cheated heart. So listen to Russell Brand on Six Music, coming with Matt and Trev, we're answering your questions, what have been left on the website, someone earlier. Doesn't it say the person who asked the question? It does. Who asked actually. it then? Oh, Come on. Catherine from Manchester. Oh, I like Manchester. Catherine from Manchester. I like her. Good she question. How we all met? We've told you about how. It's a great question. Met. This is how I met. Um, right, my first impressions of Matt. What a little prat was what I thought the first time I saw that bloke. Really? Quick, uh, no, I thought he was all right. Actually, I liked you sort of straight away. We're from similar sort of backgrounds. Armour, you comes from Dartford. I comes from Greys. We're both unusual little fellas. And like, cool, I met him MTV. I've not been presenting that long. Just becoming a bit of a junkie. And like, uh, like I didn't like really. I think no. There's some people I liked at MTV then, but there's no one else I really got on with. So he was only an intern at MTV, and I, but I didn't want to work with other people. So I just, just goes, "Where's all the time? And where's Matt? Where's Matt? Where's Matt?" Like, and there was one time I was doing a program with Lisa Snowden called Select, and like uh, that they were going like, "This program starts in a minute. It's live." I go, "Where's Matt? Where's Matt? Where's Matt?" And I go, "I don't know. Maybe he's probably doing some post or some f using a franking machine or something." I was like, "I'm not presenting the show unless someone goes and gets him." And then like the MD at MTV had to go off and find him. He was off making cups of tea or something daft. And go and get him because otherwise I sat with my back to the. How embarrassing is that? Well, I was the lowest rung of the ladder, just my first job. And the presenter of the show is going, I refuse to go on camera until he's here. So the boss of MTV had to come and find me and go, Matt, we need you in the studio, come on. What did you have to do when you got there? Just stand there. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do anything. He was my muse back then, that boy. I looked over at him and I knew it would be all right. And we've stayed friends ever since that beautiful day. Also, I just, what did I think of him? It's just like. Cocky, dirty little idiot. Shut up. Cocky, arrogant little 
twit who knew very little and was saying it very, very loudly. <laughs> Here's a question from Rosie in North Hampshire. But we're not going to answer that until we've had a little bit of news. Also, I've got a thrilling story to tell you about Trevor Locke. I Trevor Locke admitted to the other day, which he's going to regret once I tell you. But before we have that on Six Music, let's have a little show we like to call New News. That was the jam. Uh, Beat Friend before that, we had CSU Russell Brown. You listen to Six Music. It's a pre recorded show. This is happening in a little bubble. Leave your microphone alone, Trevor. Do we have to tell you on a That's daily basis? That's why you should wear headphones, because then you can hear it go... Yeah, wear headphones, Trevor. ...when you touch it. That, when you touch that, you see that stick with a phone thing on the end of it? It's a device for picking up sound. So when you touch it, little vibrations shudder down it, and it is broadcast to the nine people that are listening to this pre-recorded show. Adam, don't disturb Matt when he's working. So we're answering your questions here. Here's a question from Rosie, who's 15, in Northampton show. She says... I just want to say I love you and your show, and I want to ask you, how do you cope with the girls running after you? Well, stand still, the girls will soon catch up, then you can kiss and cuddle them, as long as, not the girls like you, Rosie, 15 years old, girls that are in their 20s, and even as old as 63 years old. <laughs> they will stand still. It's the oldest cuddle. woman you've ever When I was at drama school, I, I slept with one of the tutors, and she was quite old. How old? Probably in her 50s, and I was like 19. Oh my heavens. Yeah, it was mad. I was scared. Was it normal? Was it just like... Well, actually, no, it weren't normal, because I was frightened and like, you know... So she took advantage of you? No, because I sort of stirred it all up, right? I was on drugs, and I thought that I was all, Hey, man, yeah, come on, baby, let's go wild! She good looking? She was pretty sexy, actually, and then went back to her place, and I got properly, I was like, suddenly realised, oh my god, it's not life, it's not the same as having sex with a young woman, is it? So there's differences involved, you know, different... Well, physically? Well, like, appearance-wise, you know, she lifts up her nightie. Let's, you? let's not go there. No! <laughs> what about you, Trev? I love all women. What I about, what, what? Oldest, what? oldest oh, woman. oldest woman Trev's ever said, yeah. I, th I don't know, not Probably very Probably when he was in Peru, he had it off of a witch doctor, <laughs> one of the tribal elders or something like that, did you? That uh, sort of, yeah. Did you? Um, uh, an old man, yeah. You had it off of an old man? Yeah. Good lad, Trev. Pushing boundaries Trevor, back. you can't just leave that hanging in the air. No, well, he did, also. so, you know. <laughs> He left it hanging in the air. The dirty old devil. My boomerang won't come back. <laughs> My boomerang won't Trevor, come back. You haven't said when you met me what it was like, what you first thought. Trevor, can you imagine what it was like for the victims of <laughs> murderers? <laughs> no, I, when I met, I remember when I met first met Trevor Lock. He would, he, Trevor Lock had written a play called "There's Something You Should Know" that was on in the Edinburgh Festival. I went to audition for Trevor's uh, Trevor Lock's play up in Edinburgh Festival. Well, so you, Trevor was sat there like Simon Cowell. Exactly. And really? I had to go in there, me, a man with my gifts, and sit before that absolute lunatic and be judged by him. No, he, he wasn't. He was part of his best friend in this play. And what Trevor was like then? He was before I knew Trevor properly. He was like very mysterious, like just sort of like he was this person who never knew anything about him. You never knew quite what was going on with Trevor Locke. He'd never really tell you anything. Always into mysticism and stuff like that. But it was lovely to me, and the play was dead good, and we had really good... I uh, like, like, didn't talk to him that much off stage, but we had really good chemistry on stage. The, the play we done right. was really brilliant. And, like, it was funny, wasn't it, Trevor? It was funny. We got great reviews. Got great reviews. We sold One out. said that the scenes between the two men are comic genius. Uh, the, the only person that can match up to Trevor Locke is Russell X. <laughs> didn't know my surname. Called <laughs> really? X. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. They didn't know because was, this was years ago. He so was an unknown. Because you used to call yourself Russell X. I was uh, inspired <laughs> by the works of Elijah Muhammad. I thought, I'm not using my slave name of brand for another minute. You shall know me as Russell X. So like, I ne immediately knew Trevor was a dead special, lovely person. But in them days, the relationship only existed on stage. Not like nowadays, when I have to put up with him for real. Now, Trevor, what was this thing you told us the other day while we were still up in the Edinburgh Festival before this pre-recorded radio show that we're doing now? Trevor Locke admitted, right, me and Matt said, oh, when we were kids, wasn't it lovely when you'd come across a little fledgling bird and you'd try and save it? Matt goes, oh, yeah, I remember feeding them bits of mints and taking them into my house. I goes, oh, yeah, oh, I remember having one live in the back of my at at Walker. Like, you know, the at at Walker Star Wars toys, other Star Wars toys are available, and, you know, so you could get something from Blake 7 or whatever that other game was, right? And, like, I had this 
bird living in the back of it pooing all over the stormtroopers and it died. And all your baby birds died as well, didn't they, Matt? Well, that's, my mum made me put them outside and the cat's got them. Oh, no. But I think if you find a baby bird, you should just leave it there because its mum might come and get it. You're saying that like this is, you've got a public service duty <laughs> to say that. Like, you think there's going to be fleets of teenagers running out into wrecks and parks all over the country, snatching nestlings and clamping them I to think their if bosoms. If you find a baby bird, I think the best thing that you can do is to leave it where it be. Oh, I, hold on, alternatively, Matt, that's a good idea. Leave it where it is or take it and nourish it. Hold on, a third option's appeared to me. What you could do. Is this the is lucky. This cocky is the option. cocky locky method. The cocky locky method. Get six baby blue tits and your mate Derek Jessup. <laughs> he wasn't what's, called Derek Jessup. What's he Je called? He was called Jason Claricoats. Jason Claricoats. He was get older than mate, me. Jason Claricoats, get a spade and smash it in the skulls of six baby That's not blue what tits. He that is not decapitated. What decapitated them with a spade. Didn't you, Trevor? I didn't do it. I you asked Jason. Got Mr. I asked Fairbrother Jason to do, to do it. it. Or Jason Weathercoats, <laughs> didn't you? You yes. would have got Dusty and Dusty Coats. It was the off. kindest thing to do. There were oh, yeah, six easy. baby little blue tits. They were dying in the hot sun. Nothing was going to save them. I could let them die in agony, or I Pull could go over the, the road and Pull ask them in Jerry the shade, oh, and die slowly and coolly. No. Their mum would have come back to it. Nature, mum, nature, nature has not evolved spades from the sky, has it? Yeah, Trevor, no, so like a boot through a ceiling. Nature is cruel. Nature, nature is cruel. Not cruel, Trevor. It she is different. It's it, absolutely indifferent to the That's fate of those little baby cruel. blue tits. Oh yeah, thank God you stepped thank in. Thank God you I did. They had a and shot their heads off with a shovel. Well, the wor <laughs> most disturbing thing is he didn't do it himself. He hired a thug. He got himself a goon. He got himself a heavy to chop off baby birds' heads. Him and Jason Weathercoats. Clary. Lopping off baby yeah. birds' heads. It's just unimaginable. But Claricos is going, oh, hey boss, is this what I do, boss? <laughs> and then Trevor's at the back going, yes, Jason, move forward. That's it. <laughs> Lift up the spade. <laughs> Hey boys, did I do good boys? I stuffed their heads a real good boy. Yeah, that's it, Knuckles. Yeah. Wipe out those little jerks. <laughs> they think they're better than us, these little blue tits. Well, I'm gonna show those guys good. Take that from a shovel. Hi ya! Hey, you're better than me now, you wise guys. You now, goddamn Jason, to the old people's home. Okay, okay boys. <laughs> okay. Right, these old people. Nature's not looking after them. We gotta do it. Jason, hold them down. Yeah, and then. <laughs> Hey, boss, it's the cop. Boss, where'd you go? <laughs> Jason, you wait there. <laughs> you talk to the cops. You've done a real bad thing there, Jason. Yeah. How <laughs> dare you use Jason Weathercoats <laughs> as a murder device, as you're imp you are like an impotent sex offender with a brute assistant, aren't you, Trevor? No, I'm not. You've made that much worse than it actually was, and Jason was happy to do it. He, he knew it was the <laughs> kindest thing to do. Jason Sometimes you've got to be cruel. Jason cruel. loved his work. You telling me? You <laughs> telling me? How long did you talk to Jason? What about vets who put puppy dogs down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're vets. Trevor, they're vets. They don't get Jason Weathercoats to come in and kick puppies to death with an off now boot. They don't say, Jason, go and get some garden shears and cut this hamster in half. They don't do it for sexual pleasure, being another one of the integral differences between vets and you and Jason what, Weathercoats. I what like did, animals. What did you do with the bits Look, afterwards? I Where like did the bits go, Trevor? And they went down the back of the hedge. They were, oh, oh, that's where, <laughs> that back of the hedge, I bet there's a heap of bodies a metre high from Trevor's oh, I like animals, and I, I've always tried to look after them. Yeah, I know, you're but lovely. You, the I tell you, you remind me of St. Francis of Assisi. I remember that particular parable of St. Francis of Assisi, who'd been all followed by birds, and then he got his dumb goon assistant, Jason Weathercoats, <laughs> to smash their heads in on an evil Knievel bike ride red toy thing that you have when you're a kid. What is wrong with you, Trevor? Nothing. I care too much. That is what that I could have. I could have just walked. Caring too much. Or oh, right, it could be that his crime is killing in God's little creatures. All right, what should we have a little listen to now? Um, oh, Peter Bjorn and John, young folks. They well, don't care about them, young <laughs> folks. Trevor, you don't care about the fledglings, <laughs> and not enough to let them live. I do. Let's listen to Peter Bjorn and John. Matt, what are we going to do with that boy? That was Japan Life in Tokyo. Before that, Peter Bjorn and John, young folks. You're listening to Russell Brown on Six Music here with Matt Morgan and Trevor Locke. It's a pre-recorded show. This ain't happening now. We're answering your questions about stuff. Trevor, have you got a question or do you want to do one, Matthew? I've got one. Go on in, mate. Who's Which, it from? Uh, this question is from Dave Hendrick in Dublin. And I sound like I'm on going live. Uh, this is him getting This question's from Dave Dublin. Hendrick. He says... Which parent has influenced your personalities more? Uh, what do you mean? Which parent? Which one of your parents? Father Christmas. <laughs> who, who introduced your personality, Trev? 
Peter Sutcliffe, Fred West, where'd you get it from? The chopping off birds' heads, the getting that trout, the crimes that continue. Well, that's to from this my day. dad. That's from my dad. Because once when I, I had, uh, I caught a little. Um, <laughs> you don't even deny it. I know. I caught a little mouse. Oh. And she was pregnant. Oh. And oh. So oh. So true. She gave birth. Well, so in you the thought she was a slut, did you? <laughs> this mouse is a slut. <laughs> Why don't you get Jason whoever coach around? Hey, Jason, this 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 mouse is a little slag. Why don't you take care of her? She's pregnant. She got no wedding ring, Jason. <laughs> okay, boys. You want me to rough her up a little, boys? Listen, I like catching mice alive. Put her in the alive. tumble dryer, boys. Listen. <laughs> Shall I pop oh, her in the dryer? No, She's real wet, boys. Go on, you got a pregnant mouse, or I did you get a mouse pregnant, <laughs> I can't remember any more of you. I caught did you get a pregnant mouse, or did you get a mouse pregnant? I caught a little mouse in my Catch Alive trap so that I could study it and look after it and keep study it, and then let it, it go, and then let it go. Study? Uh, this is ridiculous. So what happens- Look up its bum, you little pervert. <laughs> you and Jason Wimmercoat, dress it up in a nightie and cuddle it, like it's all a pair of his wife. Hey boys, I'm <laughs> cuddling him too tightly now. Come on, Trev, what happened? She gave birth in the night, so when I opened <laughs> the nesting box in the morning, there were these six pink I little babies. Six. Tiny little fellas they were. Look, like the tip of your finger. Tip when do you finger. usually do that, mine? <laughs> <laughs> now, I couldn't look after them because, you know, I was going away on holiday. Because you Jason Weathercoats were out doing hits <laughs> in the woodlands, so, wiping out Sylvanian families so with I an axe. I said to my dad, I said, it'll be alright, we'll just put them, we'll just put them, you know, in outside in the thing and it'll be fine. He said, no, nah, they won't survive. Oh, so he God. put them in a bucket and drowned Oh my god! Oh my it's god. endless! Do you remember, remember we thought, oh let's stop going on about Trevor killing animals because it's one of the early it's themes of our radio That show. shocked me though. We found that, that shocked you, soon adapted, didn't you mate? It shocked you for about five minutes, then you and old Weathercoats went down to the RSPCA shelter and burned it down. You're like hunting some life Trevor. sciences protesters yeah. in reverse. You're not being cruel enough to these animals, Trevor at Lockfigs. When you see those hunted and life sciences people, do you go over to them, you know those people in shopping centres? Showing those posters of Do you go and go, how lots of the posters? They're brill! <laughs> those posters are great! Do you think those people are- I love the them. monkey with a metal hat on. <laughs> what a lovely- where would one get such a metal hat for a monkey? <laughs> I've got a monkey at home, I've just got a sailor's hat on him. <laughs> He's making a laughing stock of me. One of these spiky hats would do to the, for the very job. So your dad drowned mice in a bucket and that's when you got turned on to the idea I get turned on to it. I was really upset by it. But, hang on, it, it, well, I'm not sticking up for it, but- it drama, There's, there's a country code. Yeah, people from the country are He's, horrible to animals. No, they not. not a farm. He's not like a farmer getting rid of well, some my, starlings my or erecting a scarecrow. Him and Jason Weathercoats are smashing things skulls in Okay, so we're, so we're not it's smashing anyone's way. skulls in, we're for cutting their heads off cleanly. <laughs> Cutting off clean now, with one because it's with well practiced ease, Weathercoats lops off the heads of baby blue tits. He couldn't even look when he was doing it, he had to look away. Oh, oh this poor Weathercoats! Weathercoats didn't want to do it. Well, he just wanted your love. He <laughs> just wanted your love, Trev! I'm doing this for you, Trev! Can I get a Cuddle boys! No, you can't, Weathercoats! Not till you whacked another couple yeah. of bunnies! Don't look at me, Weathercoats! Don't look at me! Weathercoats, when I got my trousers and pants down, I don't want you looking out! <laughs> don't look at me while I'm whacking off all these moiders! <laughs> okay, let's move on. Let's so, move on. Trevor's most like his father. Trevor's like his dad in that they both get sexual pleasure from killing God's creatures. How about Lies. you, Russ? Uh. Well, well, my mum's given me a sort of a sensitivity and a caringness for other people, and my dad's given me a rage and egotism and a mad drive to succeed at all costs. So I'm sort of a mix of the two of them, which is why I think it's difficult to be me, because I sort of think, Right, come on, we've got to work hard, come on, we've got to get things done. Russell, for God's sake, what are you doing, Russell? Get that done, go for Christ's sake, what's wrong with you? I've got that, and I've also got, you're right, darling, okay, love, come on in, give us a cuddle. Like that, mm. I'm trying to fashion a personality from these two ridiculously opposing forces. What about you, Matty Morgan? I'm just like my mum. <coughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, what, really, what, like, what? too similar. Well, because uh, what's your mum like? Your mum, yeah, but when you ever tell me stories about your mum, she's always saying things like, Matt, you little dickhead! <laughs> 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 like, like, telling you, like, being like, right, no, no. And that. No, she's not. No. I know she loves you, of course she does. She's a lovely woman, Sue Morgan. I've got nothing but respect for her. But, like, what what is your mum like then? Some sort of yob? No. <laughs> like, how, I how? can't explain it, but my personality is similar to hers. So, we, when I was a teenager, we wound clash. each other up. Oh. It was a clash. Yeah, okay, so you're a lot like your mum. Also I am just my mum. Similar petticoats to her. Well, we share. Should we listen to our maiden now? Yes, let's listen to the reincarnation of Benjamin Briggs. Let's listen to that, and guess what's interesting about it is because this is a pre-record, we can see Bruce Dickinson in the next studio. Oh, I like our maiden, and, and I used to, I'm 
want to talk to him. There is Bruce Dickinson. I wonder if he can get his attention now. What would we do? He won't know what we're doing, will he? He'll think we're taking a piss. He'll think we're taking a wee wee. Can we say that? No apologies for the language. Let's listen to Iron Maiden. That was Iron Maiden. We're looking at Bruce Dickinson barking orders at his producer in the neighbouring studio. He's not. He looks really lovely. You're right, Matt. He's here. Are yours, isn't he? Yeah. Good. Trevor, Trevor Lockie kills animals for fun. No, so I on don't. this show we have learned that Trevor Lock's dad <sighs> drowns baby mice and their mothers. Did it we once? We have learned Actually, that I just remember Lock chops off birds' heads. My yes. dad, who's the most gentle soul in the universe, yeah. apart from Jesus, Buddha, those people. Yeah. Right, once. A mouse was running around in our kitchen and the dishwasher was open and it jumped into the dishwasher <laughs> and he phoned my mum and said, what should I do? There's a mouse, it's gone in the dishwasher. <laughs> and then the my, my mum was thinking about what to do. In the meantime, he thought, oh, stuff it. Slam the door and turn the dishwasher on on it. He dishwashed it to Dishwash the mouse to death. Yeah, yeah. Like it. And, and yet so you've not grown up to be an animal killer. I haven't. So my there you go, hasn't. it's no excuse. I bet, you've killed, I bet you've killed a mouse in your time. I've I bet you've I have killed actually, I have killed a mouse with a badminton racket in the yeah, garage. There you are, you see. Why I've never done that. Because it was it was running round and round in circles because it had been poisoned. It was running right. round in circles. That don't mean it wants a game of badminton. <laughs> that is how mice communicate a love of badminton. No, like the badminton racket was just the only thing I could grab. What happened was there was a mouse running round in circles and it was quite scary. Why'd like, you do it, Matt? And then it ran under a football boat and I hit it with a badminton racket and it died. It's so like a murder in a leisure centre. It's like Cluedo, <laughs> but in a leisure centre. Matt Morgan in the garage with a badminton racket by the football boot. Well, yeah, I bet you've killed animals. I ain't, ever. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Never. I did once have a couple of mice in a bag and I threw it up in the air quite a lot of times. <laughs> there you are, you see. I've but never hold on. Like this. Hold on. Those oh. mice survived that and I had another mouse living in my hair. And also, I did use the spray of my cat with water and a hairdryer. When I was young! What about- oh no, I can't say Not Morrissey, what, go on. That, um, go on. the stuff you had in your hand and that dog ate it. Oh, that was ever so funny. I once did a terrible You can't thing. say that though. Uh, well, I once was with a girlfriend in my nan's house in Dagenham, and I was living there for a bit, and I loved my nan. We should bless that this. woman. And my dad was living there again with one of his birds, and I, she had this lap dog, and I didn't like it, and I once- after an, an act with a girl had sank in the palm of my hands, that dog came in, it was always snuffling around. <laughs> <laughs> it snuffled at me. I go, Here, you see this stuff I got in the palm of my hand? I wonder if this, that dog would like it. <laughs> that dog snuffled it right up. <laughs> it snuffled it right up. I was only 17, I was on drugs. You should never do that, if, in case you're thinking about doing things like that. Anyway, you what happens know if the dog got a taste for it? <laughs> <laughs> it could never be sated. <laughs> Unsatiable dog. And it really would be a lap dog, wouldn't it, Matt? Yeah. I, I ain't a bit yeah. worried about that. Yeah. About that. <laughs> Right, we're talking about questions that people have asked us on this show, and God knows what questions will be asked us in the future now that we've revealed <laughs> ourselves to be animal torturers. God's sakes. Well, let's not talk about animals anymore. Well, there's one, Claire Ashby in De La Zouche. What no, is De La Zouche? No, she's, she's Claire and she's in Ashby De La Zouche in Leicestershire. Sounds lovely. It's De La Zouche, I'd love to go there. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not lovely. Sounds like a Martian sort of town. Mm. How well, do you know, Gunda Trev? De La I've Zouche. driven through it, haven't I? Oh, yeah. that and you're basing it on that? You're basing, basing it on that? Basing it on the fact that I've been there, I know it's not very nice. You drove through somewhere, Trevor. Yeah, I've driven you through. You drove through it probably with pigeon feathers and pigeon blood all over your eyelids, dirty devil. I have a question, says Claire from De La Zouche. I have a question for so Matt, and it goes a little something like this, which is a good way, I you're think, of sing posing it? a question. In all the time that you've spent with Russell, how many times exactly have you friends to kill him rather than endure any more of his antiques? Um, <clears throat> endure his antiques? Which, um, yes, I've got some I wonderful chicken down sideboard oh. that I, I once put on wheels and used to push around with me. I gave it a mouth. And he made doesn't it just look things. like David Dickinson, he also oh, shares some of his hobbies. Oh, you spiteful Hello. little man. Hello. You vindictive little fish hook of a geezer. Right. Uh, yeah. so th this means how many times have we nearly had a fight, I suppose, doesn't it? We've nearly had fights and you've gone, Russell, stop doing that, Russell, mm, mm, mm. When like have we nearly had a fight? I've never actually, oh, we, we did nearly have a fight in a car oh, once. In that car, I pulled, I went, I pulled his hair and then we went over a bump, I think we said this before. <laughs> and uh, as the, we went over the bump, it pulled his hair a bit, much harder than I would have really liked. Really hard? He just turned around and spat at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I was with a girlfriend. What a classy fella. He just went, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oi, what'd you do that for? And then we, and I said, oh, and then we, I sort of, I can't remember if we actually sort of fought verbally after, I think we did. Yeah, and then when we went round Martino's house, when we got there, he goes, um, if we fight, 
don't ever hit me in the face. And we were looking in the mirror at the time, he goes, because this is beautiful. I never I said that! I swear to God, I remember it. No, you oh. said this beautiful, is beautiful. about my own face. That's yes. what I meant our friendship. Come on. No, I you were holding on to your great big gravestone s slab of a face. <laughs> and he went, this is beautiful. <laughs> this is beautiful, man. It would be a real crime if someone busted this up real bad. What a daft thing But so, say. I don't know, we have we ever- No, we do have a lot of arguments, don't we? Yeah, but, oh, there was one, mm, we've never actually ever nearly other. come to blows at all. No, we realise our friendship is very important for our friendship. Plus, I'd beat you up. Come on, Matthew, I'm lethal, I'm a dangerous, <laughs> I'm a dangerous fella. <laughs> this is from Lindsay Millwood, she goes, Is there any celebrity who you were really excited to meet, but when you did, it was a letdown, tell all. Never been excited to meet no celebrities, have we? Who would we like I to have. Who? Slash. <laughs> oh yeah, you went, yeah, I'm sorry, we went to a party, Slash was there, you should have seen Matt scampering around like a nit. Oh, it's Slash! It's Slash! Oh, Slash, can I have a photo? Oh, Slash, can I have an autograph? Oh, Slash, can I touch your hair? I didn't do any of those things apart from touch his hair. You did all of those things, it was a ridiculous business. Me, who was that excited to meet? Uh, Steve Coogan, a bit excited to meet yeah, Steve I was, Coogan. Yeah. But, uh, no, not he wasn't disappointing. Neither no, was Slash. Oh, no, Slash no. was amazing. Neither of them people were disappointing. We've Good always said, like everyone, all the famous people you meet, they're always really nice. Yeah, we've all been. Do really you remember nice. when we met Michael Ball? He's really Michael nice. Michael Ball was lovely. We met him outside the radio. He was funny when he goes doing a radio show. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm say. Michael Bloody Ball. <laughs> then he ran off laughing, eating yeah. popcorn. It was brilliant to meet him. Well, if you met Morrissey. Oh, Morrissey, now yeah, that would be exciting. Well, if you met Morrissey and he just witheringly looked at you and oh, went, yes. I can see right through you. You're a dreadful little prat, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be really hurt and upset. I'd just would you change it. the name of your cat? No, I'd just hate the cat and kick it. I'd let, <laughs> I'd let Trevor Locke look after the cat when I went on holiday, knowing that when it came back, it would have one of them lampshade things on its head and wheels instead of back legs. Wouldn't it, Trevor? Yes, it would. Eat your fudge, Trev. Where's my fudge? Right. <laughs> I've got a question here from Kim in North Ham. She goes, do you think you're the most famous son of- Oh, it's for Trevor. Do you think, Trevor, you murderous, animal-torturing pig- It doesn't say that, my italics. That you are the most famous son of Northamptonshire, what with being on the radio and that. Do you think that, Trev? Says Kim. No, I don't, because Sir Malcolm Arnold comes from, uh, Northamptonshire. Who's he? Well, he's a brilliant composer. Com Who? He composed Who? the bridge over the river Kwai and all those sorts of oh, things. Oh, bridge over the river bloody Kwai, we're all prisoned here, I do not remember why, this bridge is taking ages, yeah, I'm yeah. feeling really sad, I'd like to go back to England, but the Japanese are bad. Other songs are available in Japanese, are alright really. The Inn of, six, sort of, the the of Sixth Happiness, he composed that. Joe Wiley's famouser than me, and she went to my very school. Joe Wiley? She is yeah. famouser than you, yeah. as is the word famouser, you yeah. dirty little swine. Right, here's another one from another. Oh no, that's the one I just read out. Hey, let's listen to a bit of music, shall we? What are we going to listen to? Wine coloured grass, Dave and Dando. I like this song. Imagine if the grass were all wine coloured. What exactly? What would wine that though? Mean? Red wine. Red wine, white wine. White you wine. White wine. White wine coloured. It's just no. a hot nice summer. It's just been a good summer. That's yeah, a good summer. Right, yeah. Yeah. In the grass, all white. Yeah, let's have a listen to it and think about what kind of grass you think. If you are colour blind, then r uh, grass is. Know. Because red and green, your colour blind, you can't tell that's the, the problem. Is that grass, why 3D is about if there's a red green? ball on some green grass, you can't. They, it's all the same sort of grey no. tone. It's true. Really? So colour blindness. The yeah. The ball and the grass are all both same coloured. Really? Yes. Really? Is yeah. that why do you think when you get 3D things, one lens green, one lens red? What lens red? What lens green? Mm, do you yeah. Think that red and green are somehow significant. No, because sometimes that's red, or, that's red and blue. The they They're are not such red and blue, spectral are they? opposites. Yeah. Spectral opposites, yeah. like me and Trevor Luck. Spectral opposites. Just look at what he's got. A tiny little winky, a lust for killing. Two things I don't adore. This is not what I Why are you off. singing in every link? It's, I don't know. I just like yeah, it's nice, but it's, uh, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. It's got to really. stop, hasn't it? You listen to Russell Brand and Six Music. Yes, listen to Evan Dando. That way, Raven Dando, I'm called Grassy, and listen to Russell Brand on Sex Music. I'm accompanied here by Trevor the Mouse Murderer Lock. Hello, Trevor. Oh, hello, Russell Brand. Matty. Hello, Morgan. There. Morgan, there's Morgan there. We're all gonna speak in these ridiculous voices. Oh, People right, start to hate us, won't they? <laughs> have you got any questions there for us, Trevor? I have. I've got a little letter from Victoria Brennan from Barnes. Stop yeah. doing that, Trevor. That's you how she's written it. Trevor, why are you That's so hot? That's how she's written it. Has she? Why she's are you so hot, Trevor? I'm hot because it's Can't hot. It. It's getting hot in here because Trev's got diseases. He's getting so hot, he'll have to go to a clinic. Why do you think it's so hot, Trev? 
I think it's because uh, Adam's put the heating up unbearably high, Adam and I'm wearing a necktie. Producer, Adam, the our producer, Adam, our producer, has given right. We have we work on this thing. What's called a clock, which is a list of all the tracks that we played in the song and where we're supposed to do links between the Eagles of Death Metal, who are coming up in a minute, and Sid Vicious, who will be coming up after that. Is the word paedophile? <laughs> Presumably, we are doing an interview with a paedophile or discussing at length paedophiles. Why on earth has this turned up well, in this document? Adam explained it as he needed to check the spelling of the word, and he was, in the and he was doing the document, did it, and then he's left it in there. So we've got now, paedophile. I don't know about much about Freud. I don't know much, but what I do know. Is that if the word paedophile it keeps up cropping up in your work? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it keeps <laughs> cropping up. You need to probably go and see a private investigator or a psychiatrist. Possibly. I think Possibly it's healthy though. that he doesn't know how to spell it. <laughs> is that right? Well, you spell, spell it right there. P A E D O P H I L E. Americans don't put the A E. Yeah. He's not an American. It's like though, encyclopedia. They don't put the A E. They don't put the legs up. Dirty anyway, so American girls. back to the show we're doing. Right Jeff, what's your question, mate? Um, Victoria Brennan's question is this to all three of us. <laughs> Get Did on with it. Get on with I this question. What that noise was about? Ask the quizzy, we was bored. Okay. We did you, did you have an imaginary friend? And if you did, what age did she go away? All your she? friends are still imaginary, or aren't he, they? Or he, or he. Did you have an imaginary friend, Trip? I had an imaginary donkey called Moo that I used to ride to school. What? Oh, oh God. God. Why would you call a donkey Moo? Why would you ride it to school? Why would it be a donkey? <gasps> Answer all those questions, Trip. Well, it's a sensible thing to do if you're going to go to school. Go on transport. You're not Christ arriving in Nazareth, Trev. <laughs> no, no, no. We, I used to pretend I was riding the Grand National. On a donkey? On a donkey, yeah. I thought it was cool. You can't do that. It wouldn't let you enter. Did your parents not walk with you? Did they just think, no. oh, God. They're probably right. at home smashing things' heads in with spades. I had to walk to school with Julia's mum. I'm surprised your dad didn't kill your imaginary donkey with some imaginary arsenic and an imaginary sickle. It Julia's mum probably thought, oh god, we've got to pick up that idiot lot. She hates me. Donkey, Come on, Trevor, Moo. have you got your sandwiches? Yes, I'm just getting on my donkey. Come on, Moo, don't slow me down, have a carrot. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong end. <laughs> Smells <laughs> nice, though. Oh, you silly. ridiculous child. Silly boy. You Could you have a... No. One. Oh, I don't, I don't, oh, imaginary enemies. And, uh, <laughs> and that's uh, called paranoia. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, horrible they were. They seek to do me in. These fellows, look at them—a fox, a wolf. They want me to follow them someplace. And there was a. I thought I was visited in the night by an extraterrestrial being of he light. He told you you're going to be the most famous man. No. On digital telly. He, told me, <laughs> he said, "Digital telly, young man, is a medium in which you will flourish. One day there will be invented a medium. <laughs> it's not quite as good as telly. And on that." You will be a superstar. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. He just used to go. Mmm. It was like a ball of green light, and I called it Jade, and it used to go. Mmm. Jade because it was green. I didn't know what else to call it, Matt. I was only young. I didn't have a huge. That's quite nice thing. that you called me. And when did this come and visit you? Sort of in the night. How many Mmm. times? Four. Did it put something up your bum? Yes, it did actually. Well, it was obviously, it, you just think. repackaged a memory. <laughs> it's obviously very difficult for you. It was called Jade, and it looked exactly like my stepdad when drunk. When people, <laughs> not really. <laughs> It's amazing that people go, yeah, I was visi visited the night by aliens and anal probing and all this. So obvious what it is. What's what the, is it? They're, 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 they're been abused or <laughs> something's <laughs> yeah. going on. No. <laughs> They've <laughs> just dreamt that an alien's <laughs> put a probe up their bottom. It's a sensible place to put a probe. Where else are you going to put a probe? Down exactly. someone's luck. Or, or in their ear, yeah. In their mouth. Yeah, in their what mouth. are you a probe for? Why aliens travel all the way across space and they get here to stick things up people's bums? Hang on, so you, you, that's what we perverts. do to the animal kingdom. Russell. I don't stick things up animals' bums. You do it to the animal kingdom, Trevor. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, hang on, you were visited by extraterrestrials? Well, I don't know what it was. It just was this green ball of light going. What did. <laughs> <laughs> That's well funny. Yeah. I think it was going down for a little while, and then it stopped, and then everything went back to so normal. So it's not imaginary. That's not imaginary then? I don't know. It might have been. I mean, I think perhaps it was imaginary. I okay. don't know. Who's to say? Maybe it was something real. Oh, Christ. Oh, blimey. I've got an alien living in my brain box. I never had anything imaginary. You had that crow living in your wall, scratching well, it. Well, was real, dying. wasn't it? You've never had anything imaginary? Well, no, I haven't. He lives oh, in his imagination on. most of the time. I can't get a word of sense out of him. Why would. I don't understand it's the like motivation track. I, I, was, I was one of four children. Why would I have an imaginary one? It was crowded well, people enough. People everywhere. But you want to have, take refuge. I used you to have Anzacs ref living in the hedge. What? Anzac soldiers. What, Australian soldiers? Yeah. What do you have Anzacs for? Did you take them supplies? Oh, well, they would work. I was trying to defend them. My boomerang won't come back. Okay, I used to this lay in the garden. The Eagles of death metal. With Matt's going to tell you a story about laying in the garden a minute. I'm terrified. Did you make little molehills? Would you lie in the garden, burrow in with your little dinkle? The Eagles of death metal the now. Dinkle. So I rude, want you. Absolutely. Oh, oh. perfect. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> that was the Eagles of Death Metal. I want you so hard. You're listening to Six Music. I'm Russell Brand. He's Matt Morgan. Trevor Locke's gone to the toilet. What do you think of Trevor, really? I think I'm a bit concerned about all this murder. All these murders. You can't help but worry. We're going to listen to the news now, and I'll be very, very surprised, Matt, if there's not a story about a little fella called Trevor Locke. Oh, I've got just got so I was laying in the garden pretending to be a soldier with a cap gun. I used to lay there for hours yeah. shooting at birds. And that's what you did. Yeah, only with a cat gun. Cat you can't gun. kill anything with it. Yeah, just okay, used to lay there. Trevor, yeah. used to lay in the garden. The masculine games I played, unlike you two. What do you mean? I never played emasculating games or odd games or feminine games. What? Didn't you used to put on your mum's clothes? And oh, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. That's a bit feminine. Let's put the news on now. Right, okay, that was some news. And we also had Sid Vicious. Come on, everybody, make an effort. That's what Sid Vicious was saying. Oh, sorry. Saying Made me you. look up. I oh, know, because <laughs> you're both ladies. You're texting someone, are you, Matt? <laughs> Stop texting someone during the radio show. Trevor, st <laughs> stop playing with your pen knife. <laughs> and after Sid Vicious, it was the Who Trevor's ride that magic bus. Trevor Locke just said the sweetest thing I've ever heard anyone say, yeah. actually. Say again, Trevor. What did I say? What was Because Trevor's going away on holiday for a week to New York. I just asked, I said, who wants to borrow my pen knife for a week? Oh, it's so sweet. But it's that not sweet when you realise what that's probably been used for. <laughs> actually, yeah, the sweetness does begin that's, to subside. That's how it starts. When you smell it and it smells of rat blood. Hey, you want to borrow my pen knife? <laughs> You're a boy, such a pretty knife. <laughs> Hey, that knife sure is pretty. There ain't no cancer dequences out there. Yeah, there sure is. You gotta go out and stab me up a rabbit real good. You gotta go put that in the butt butt of a guinea pig, wise guy. He just wants you to get your prints all over it. You want my dabs? Do you want my dabs on that blade? No, is that what you I want, I don't want to take this inadvertently on the flight. Like he I do he every flew time to I Edinburgh travel. with a knife and he's a BBC employee. A BBC employee? It's an accident and this time I remembered and I've been not. flying around the country with a dagger during a terror alert using a knife smothered in an animal's blood. Trevor Locke, what the... Hell is wrong with you? <laughs> what are you going to say? <laughs> Just be careful. <laughs> Just give a lot what the do, cock is wrong do. with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a silly man. What a funny thing to say. What a funny thing to say. What a funny thing to say. Um, yeah. I am texting, yes. I've, well, I'm, are you texting that doctor? We've yeah, I met a girl it. who's a doctor and I'm a hypochondriac and it's perfect. She was nice though, I met her. Sarah, the doctor. Yeah, she's lovely. Nice she was. I liked how she dressed. She was an unusual girl. She was in a band. Can't remember the name of it. No, it's like a dresses. mod band. Yeah, she made her own clothes. She did. She was a really nice person. She's not dead. She's still alive. We yeah, took no, her out in the wrong tent. Trevor Locke's probably going to leap up there and jab her with a fork or a spoon or a compass or something. He's got his I don't Swiss do that. army knife. I've never knife. jabbed anyone with anything. Oh yeah, all them rabbits. They killed themselves, did they? Oh, they rabbits. lanced themselves. I've never they? killed a rabbit. Trouts, mice, pigeons, eels. The list goes on and on. Well, he's never killed a rabbit. He just keeps them alive, like that person in Seven in the bed. You, which leads me to my next question, actually. Uh, when well, I do that, you call me a square. Uh, well, I'm so sorry, but when you see what a good link this is, you're gonna think I'm really brill. It's from, uh, <laughs> Winkia in Belgium. She goes, uh, Winky? <laughs> don't laugh at people's names. Winkia in Belgium. It could be pronounced Winky. Winkia, like that, in no, so, well, first name is Wing, right? So that's probably, I don't know, Oriental, or maybe kind of Oriental is an old-fashioned word, you can't say that anymore. I can say what I like, mate. Can Oriental, it? Uh, no, Go on, then. Let's say the C word. C! C! <laughs> Bob Goldoff called me a C! <laughs> uh, Wing, and then the second name, Kia, K E A, from Belgium, Wing Kia, and only a childish person would make the connection between Wing Kia and Winkies. <laughs> right, and that is what you, Matt Morgan, have just done, which has singled you out, mate. You pass me a note <laughs> saying, when I read out this person's name, say Winky. I Here it not. is. That is a note that's got Matt, what Matt's cultural review written on it, probably saying, I went to see Ron Muick, the sculptor, and I saw the winkies of several giant wax figures, and eventually became so aroused I was removed from the museum <laughs> by force. <laughs> um, Winkia from Belgium is asking, what's your favourite sin? You just mentioned the film Seven, I brilliantly packaged that whole thing up, Matt. Did really well there. Did well, didn't yeah. I? Didn't I do well? Yes. Didn't I do well. So, Matt, to you, this question. Of the seven sins, what's your favourite one, Sam? When, like, when, what does that mean? What what's one do I most, one, in, most like, like, indulging in? Yeah. Indulging in, what do you like to see on a video? I don't know, it's up to you. Uh, Just go with instinct. Wrath. Wrath? What do you like wrath for? Because I like, uh, you know, wrath. What do you like being all rough To un unleash your wrath. I think it's pronounced wrath. Wrath, I think it's wrath. What do you want to unleash some what wrath is it wrath, for? wrath, wrath, incur my wrath. You're gonna incur my wolf. I hope we ain't done nothing to incur his wolf. Well, that or gluttony. Gluttony? Well, yeah. stuffing yourself. Yeah. Why'd you like gluttony for? Um. You are a bit greedy. Yeah. 
I don't really have a the yeah. thing that stops you eating when you're full up doesn't seem to work for me, so I just keep just eating. Yeah, yeah and then I have to sit down. there for about an hour feeling All awful. All complaining, not want to do anything, I know I have to part of it. Trevor, what's your favourite deadly sin? Um, murder. <laughs> <laughs> Bestiality, murder of animals. Uh, sloth or vanity, probably. Yeah, you're quite slothful, aren't you? He's not yeah. vain. You're not oh, vain. I'm very vain. You are well, a he's not working. Hey, you want to concentrate on that vanity a bit, Trevor, you've really let yourself go. I think God, if he if you arrived at the gates of heaven, then he went... Have you committed any of the seven sins? And you said, yeah, vanity. He'd look you up and down and go, come on in. <laughs> Forget about it, blimey. Don't be silly. It, didn't, it wasn't meant to work like that. Yeah, you, you've, you've misused vanity there. It's just like the elephant man coming in saying, oh, I've been ever so consumed with my appearance. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he'd let you straight in, mate. So How about you, Russ? Thanks for that question. What's my favourite deadly sin? Lust. Co coveting neighbours' wives. I do covet. Oh, I was looking at my neighbour's wife the other day. I was like, oh, if I could... Get her out of that Zimmer frame. I don't like. I don't no, <laughs> cover, but no, I don't cover. I'm not covetous. I tell you what, I am though. Lust, I suppose. Oh, lust is yeah, yeah lust. Because I sometimes look at someone who's dead attractive. I think, oh, I like give you such a cuddle. Oh, no. I'm what? not going to say what you say. Cut it he bites his fist sometimes. If a woman with massive boobs walks past <laughs> him, he grabs onto you, doesn't he? he Trevor does, knows. Grabbed onto it's like a before. claw, it's like an eagle <laughs> grabbing hold your shoulder. He bites his fist and goes. <laughs> 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 it's really obvious, and the woman sometimes turns round. Yeah, yeah. It just it's insane. <laughs> oh, blimey! You know, look at that! You know, what? <laughs> women everywhere. <laughs> like that. Things like that. <laughs> oh God, help us! Look at these women. <laughs> That's just because I'm passionate. I'm just a passionate man going through life, expressing my it's, feelings. I feel sorry for it. It's almost like you're out of control of it. It controls you. I'm an aficionado. I'm an enthusiast for the women. That's all it is. I like the girls. I'm a connoisseur. I'm a gentleman thief, like Raffles. Yeah, lust, I suppose. Bit too much of the old lust. What are stuff. they all? I mean, there's some that Hold are on, weird. Let's name them. Lust, wrath, sloth, greed, envy, pride, covetousness. No, <sighs> covetousness is not one. Yes, it is. Is it? Yes. Coveting things. Yeah, covetousness. Like, well, there are seven deadly sins. I mean, it says Brad Pitt's name in the film. Seven deadly sins. Brad Pitt's name in the film. Seven. Wrath, pride, greed, lust, envy, covetousness, greed, envy, pride, lust. Is that Morgan Freeman impression? That was well, a Brad Pitt impression. Quite good. Was it? It yeah. was meant to be Morgan lust, Freeman. Lust, pride. Do it again. Oh. Uh, I thought it was Lust, Brad. pride, wrath, gruff, diddly eye chai, crafts. It did sound like him. Yeah. Yeah. Good, thanks, lads. Appreciate it, appreciate it, guys. Hold on, another question from Winkia, from Belgium. We can't all do all the questions from Winkia. Oh, if well, it's a good question. In Belgium. Have, ever, have you ever felt that one of you's gone too far in his absurdity? Matt, have you? Have you ever gone too far in your absurdity? Have you ever felt that one of you has gone too far in your absurdity? I don't Russell, know. about 19 million yeah. times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Absurd c character. <laughs> from, you know, from the poor out. <laughs> From where? For the pore in. What from is the pore in? The pores in your skin. Ah, from the pore. Absurdity every pore seeps from, every from you. Cell. Yeah, I suppose so. Here's one from Amy D, Merseyside. When did you lose your virginity and do you, rec do you regret it now, Matt? Um, no. No, you don't regret it because it was probably a natural occurrence. Trevor, when did you lose oh, well, your virginity? Oh, do you want an age? Well, yeah, hang on, wasn't I asked this by Neil Strauss, last show? Yeah, yeah, he asked me. Sixteen. I was fifteen, soon to be sixteen. What about you, Coxie Not Locks? with me, though, obviously. No, oh, God. Well, no. Anyway, <laughs> to <laughs> together. Yeah. I, was, I was a bit older than Matt. <laughs> I guided him. Matt, just relax. This is perfectly natural. <laughs> Kiss me on the mouth. <laughs> Trevor, can't, that's, that's a very relax. personal question. What is how old are you? Twenty-four! <laughs> <laughs> Have you lost it yet, mate? Oh, you dirty little devil. All them guinea pigs died in vain. Just get Go on. I haven't lost my virginity. I'm a virgin. Good Trevor, boy, Trevor. So I'm a Christian. I think that's don't probably so best silly. for everybody that Trevor doesn't lose yeah. his virginity. We've been married about nine times. Trevor, you should have had it from one of your wives. You can't just say that. Lie. Yeah, Trev. Don't lie to our listeners, Trev. At least make up a lie that's 21. Number. I was 21. Oh. That's alright. That's nothing to be ashamed I'm of. I'm not ashamed of it. You should be a bit ashamed. You had a lot of hobbies. I regret it. <laughs> <laughs> your nobby was your hobby. I, I wish I hadn't done it. My nobby was my hobby. Because, you know. It's just pointless, really. What, having it all? Yeah. It's a laugh. It's what, so you wish you'd never have done it? I think sex is overrated. <laughs> I, I love it. I think it's it, underrated. Man. Underrated, if anything. If there's a rating for it, that rating is too low. Good. Bit of the old sex. Brilliant. Nice cuddle. Climax. Off you go home. Oh, so that's you it's awkward. It's embarrassing. It's you climax from a cuddle, do you? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, climax. Oh, there's the climax. Oh, climaxic, wasn't it? No, of course not. I'm ever so good and well practiced at the old sex rooney when says Tom from Buckinghamshire, let's do another record, then we'll do some more. Afterwards, we're going to be asking a little question from Tom from Buckinghamshire. When did you leave school? How many qualifications did you get? Blimey, that would be interesting to answer. But first, let's have 
a little bit of a, what I might like to call a record. Roots don't feel right. Yeah, come on, why not? That was the magnificent visit of Russell Brown on Six Music here with Matt Morgan and Trevor Lock. Matt, what was Why'd that? Why'd you say my name in uh, the s Snow's track? What's that song called? Informer. Informer. Matt Morgan. I don't know. I think at the time we met, um, I was a big fan of Snow. Snow influenced me an awful lot, so I just tried to repeat the rhythms of his speech wherever possible. Matt Moore. You used to like Snoop quite a lot, didn't you? I still like Snoop. Do you? I like his fingers, they taper towards the end. It's lovely long Stupid fingers. Stupid reason to like a rapper. It's not, it's not, mate. It's a good reason any, to like anyone. Someone's fingers taper towards the end, I like it. Fine. Fine to have tape That's with haunting. It. Oh, so he talks in that way, kind of slowly. I want to do it a whole different way, mother f Lenny the stops, you know. I like it. <laughs> I, I like, like that way you talk. Very good in. impression, actually. Good, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah, like that's how That's two talks. good impressions. Two good impressions, a black actor and a black rapper. That makes me friend of black people. Yeah. <laughs> and I've just ruined that by doing that sort of Louis Armstrong thing at the end of that song. So, um, yeah. What, what are we talking about, chaps? Oh, Questions. Trevor's sign. We didn't answer how many GCSEs we got from oh, that yeah. dad. How many do you get, Matt? Nine. Of what, C and above? Yeah. Buffin! Oh no, one I've got a D in biology. <laughs> Buffin! How many A's did you get? Three A's. Buffin! Three, three B's, Buffin. two C's, Buffin. and a D. Buffin. Trev, what did you get? Six. Buffin! What? it! Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, <laughs> communicating. Trevor's so sitting there cleaning his glasses. Look at him cleaning his glasses. That was so sweet when he goes, and would, he just asked, it was when a record was playing, we took the mickey out of him, but we go, uh, would you mind if you'd like to borrow my pen knife for a week? Oh, <laughs> what a lovely person. Um, what, you got six? What did six. you get? You were doing, I suppose, uh, did you? Did you do some sort of drama school? No, I was tests. at normal school, wasn't I? I got a B in sword fighting. <laughs> <laughs> my sword fighting was rubbish. That very Stage kissing, brilliant, the results are in. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he's got syphilis. <laughs> um, uh, no, I didn't go to stage school till I left normal school, then I got a grant to go to stage school uh, when I was like post school age. I got uh, I got a B in English language, B in English lit, B in drama, C in history. Buffin. Failed the rest. Oh, I just done you got four. Is that all you got four? Yeah. I wasn't very good at doing exams and sitting around. What and about A levels? Others. None. Did you do A levels? I got A levels. No. Yeah. How many? Three. What'd you get? Uh, English, history, <laughs> and uh, economics. Good lad. And I've got a degree as well. You've not got a degree, got a degree in degree. philosophy. So have I. Oh, look at the two degrees got, over there. I've got A levels in English literature, yeah. psychology, sociology, and something else. Art. You can't even. You need an A level in what A levels you've got. You'd fail that because you're so daft. You can't even remember your own qualifications. They're completely pointless. Anyone doing Rubbish. them, I'd tell what you just don't time. bother. This is the education system. It's just indoctrinating. You have to spend your life conforming. Leave just school now. Walk out Leave of your college. Do a great now. dirty poo in the playground <laughs> don't do and that. kick it into the face of no, any authority figure that you see. I mean the police, never the do government. That. In the words <laughs> of never Ice that. Cube, f the bloody police. F no, em. don't. F them. What have they done for us? I like the police. They're they helping us. Right. I like them when they're protecting me from something. But, but it's true though. That's cool. Like GCSEs allow you to do A levels. A levels allow you to go to university. So that, in a way, they are important. Just but puts you on a train. It's a conformity. Pointless. 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 We don't need no education. Yes. Why don't you? If you've got, if you've got any ambition, if you think there's anything brilliant in you, leave school now. No, no, no. Leave. No. March out of the school. Because you need to get. Like I, I you should did. do A levels. Become yeah. a slave trader, like Rambo did. I think it was white slaves. I don't know. Oh, that's is, that, then. is that better? <laughs> 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 Worse, isn't it? Probably. I don't know. I mean, it's probably just the same. I mean, you it's not. You really good should check these facts out before you bellow them out across the nation. <laughs> oh, hello! Check your facts! I'm so sorry for saying is ignorant, that, is that stupid things. Is that a Lynn Wood impression? Uh, no, uh, maybe I'm John Stapleton. Maybe you're married to Lynn Folds Wood. We're doing a debate show today. Many issues could have happened. Maybe you've been killed. What happened maybe in you're the married night to Lynn Folds Wood. You, you turned yeah, into exactly. a crap Rory Bremner. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I like doing impressions all of a sudden. I don't know what's come on. I can do some do impressions. Go on, then, do one. I'm giving you the beating of the life. Good Monty Burns impression. Very good. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. That could be Smithers to your I can only say I'm giving you the beat. <laughs> that's the only thing you can do. Hold on, I can do. Simpson, eh, probably. I can do Mr. Barraclough from Porridge. <clears throat> oh, Fletcher, you've taken advantage of my good nature. Give me an impression, Chef. <laughs> no, none. 
<laughs> you must be able to do one. Do I impression. can't do any impressions. I don't he's do got impressions. No, he's got no cultural references. Bruce Dickinson's references. darting about in there. He's doing his pre-recorded new show. He's going mad in there. He's kicking things over. He's got his bum out. It's mental. <laughs> Why is he in there with a nurse? He's allowed to play loads of metal. We should be playing more metal. Tre, Matt, Tre, Matt. We, uh, Matt and Trey, oh, that's our part. We don't, we play enough nice music. Come on, stop being so silly. Right, Trey, let's launch your Sonic Enigma. Trevor like Sonic Enigma. Trevor like gonna do a live Sonic. Right, so do your jingle, cos Trevor couldn't be bothered to record one cos it's a pre-record, so he'll have to do his jingle live. Come on in, Trev, do your jingle for your Sonic Enigma. It's Trevor's Sonic Enigma. Hoopbush! It's Trevor with kill a monkey today! Sonic Enigma. Shall we smash his head in <laughs> with a mallet? <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, okay, so that's that. That's the jingle for it, Trev. Yeah. You, uh, in oh, went, that went on too long, didn't it, Matt? Far too long. Indulgent. Uh, rubbish. Rubbish. It's nothing like Bjork. <laughs> right, now go on and do the en enigma itself. Okay, here it goes. Right, this is Trevor Locke doing a live enigma. If you know what song this pertains to, text us on 64046. We'll pick someone out of the hat, and then you will come in. There won't be a hat, because it's cyber. A cyber hat, a cyber bonnet. I suppose you could call it a cyber bonnet. The winner will come into the studio next week if you feel like it, and come and watch the show with us. So, uh, well, we'll be doing the show. Ooh, you can join in the show. It's going to be great. Anyway, Trevor, do your Sonic Enigma, old bean. Oh, I'm walking through the park, and I can see... Oh, well, that, that's a flamingo. I'm quite hungry. I know. I'm going to get it. <laughs> oh. It's just disappeared. <laughs> Trevor, why do all of your Sonic Enigmas sound like s you've carried them out in a lavvy alone? I'll just say, why do you bother to pre-record them? Because that's better just doing it like that. See, why do you bother? Why do you bother pre-record things for, well, Trevor? because then Chris can put a little thing underneath it, you know, sound effects on Chris? Time. Who's Chris? Is this one of your imaginary friends? And when you say a little <laughs> thing underneath it, are you referring to your own balls? <laughs> Dirty little devil. Do you want to put a, more, a matchbox, some sandpaper? He puts a bit of echo on it, you know. Sometimes I play the, the guitar. He echoes on your puts, balls. Puts a bit of reverb on the jingle. He puts Hello? some reverb on your jingle. Oh, he's reverbed all over my jingle. Now look at the mess on my tum tum, you saucy little devil, Trev. All right, come all on. All right, come Why on. Why does it always have to come around to a flu? I don't know, darling. Now then, so if you uh, don't know the answer to that, don't bother to text us. But if you do know the answer, at six four zero four six, the winner can come and spend some time with me, Trev and Matt. You'll regret ever coming here when you see what they actually like. <laughs> so uh, yes, yeah, so if you know, Trev, do you want to do it once more, mate? Yeah, I will do. See how different it is this time. Being consistent because such a mug. Oh, here I am walking through the park. I'm quite, quite hungry. So Look, there's a flamingo. I'm gonna He's get it. He's rushing His little face. Look at his little face lighting up as he does that. Fiddling with oh, his pen knife. It's, oh, it's disappeared. <laughs> Stupid. There was only one <laughs> last yeah, time. Yeah, you've changed it, Trev. Stupid, changed it. that. Inconsistent. Really silly. If you know what that is, 64046. They're gonna need more clues because it's quite a hard one this week. No, it ain't. That's well easy. From a band walking by, she's beautiful. Why she what by? is that band? What? We must find out. so out. easily you distracted. You're doing a radio show. You Sorry. just saw a woman through a window. <laughs> <laughs> that is lust, mate. Is you that lust? That was a deadly sin right there, wasn't it? Deadly sin, yeah. Oh, God, it's so bloody deadly. All right, this is what we're going to listen to now. Let's listen to Eddie Brickle and the new Bohemian. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's not what she's called. <laughs> she's she's not called Edie Brickle and the new Bohemian. Yes, she is. She's called Edie Brickle. Eddie Brickle. Oh, who cares? <laughs> and who are these Bohemians? White man in hammers. <laughs> Eddie Brickle. Let's Eddie see. Brickle, Eddie Brickle, but I don't care how long she's been with these Bohemians. I think what's funny about it was she's married to make Paul Chimon. <laughs> really? Yeah. Making a mistake, but making a mistake with a really enthusiastic voice is much funnier. Yeah. Is it? Let's listen to her. <laughs> Eddie Brickle. <laughs> Go, let's listen to her. There she is then. There. That was Edie Brickle there. I've no, always, Edie Brickell. I, I really like Edie Brickell. I've always been really into her. I remember the first time I listened to Edie Brickell. I was, oh, I was thinking, Edie, you, and you're good at this with her song Little Miss S. Right, so, uh, yeah, we've got Trev Sonic Enigma. If you think you know the answer, text us on 64046. We've got some questions here for, that people have sent in. This is from Katie from Manchester. She goes, when you talk about the good old days, when Russell and Matt were tearing around, doing completely insane things, it's well known that Russell was totally smacked off his boobs. What about you, Matt? Were you like, also under the influence of naughty substances? Matt, were ya? No. Yes, you was, so I was supposed to give them to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was, like, I was tearing around. I tried them. You just I tried didn't really them like and it. sat around depressed. It didn't work for me. I'm not really into that sort of thing. I drank beer. Did you? 
Well, didn't I? Yeah, yeah he was always drunk. I wasn't always drunk. drunk. I did my job, and then in the like, Friday now. and Saturday night, I'd go out and get drunk, like everyone else in the country. I wasn't there sitting drinking vodka in the morning out of my handbag <laughs> like you, <laughs> buying <laughs> drugs on the street, and getting shot at by someone with a tiny gun. I got shot at with a tiny, tiny gun. Yeah, I was buying some uh, drugs off of this estate, and I was waiting for the dealer to go in and get them. Like We've said this before, cab, right, yeah. And I got shot at it was yourself, a yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, oh, right. I do apologise. But I brought it up, so he's got to Yeah, I've got to clarify, because people are listening. And was, while I was waiting, someone fired a gun at me, and it pinged off the roof like something, like it was a pee or something. It weren't that dangerous, but I've always, when I describe it, I make it sound... Someone fired an air Much, gun at him. much worse than and it was. And he's phoned me up and goes, Yeah, I just bought some drugs. Uh, I got shot at. Got shot at again, buying <laughs> the drugs. Oh, these drugs, man, they're going to wipe me out one of these days. One of these days, I'm going to take a bullet, and I'm going to have to pull it out with tweezers. <laughs> Don't worry though, I got a toothpick. I'm gonna flick this bullet straight on out of me. Bullet went in one of the my tear ducts. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever been stuck up something? This is Fraser Donachy, as in Donna Kebab. This is Fraser Donachy. Fraser Donachy goes, since I use that like, obsessed with pronunciation. <laughs> have you ever been stuck up something, like a tree or stuff? Have you ever been stuck yeah, up I something, have. Matt? What? I remember when I was a little kid, I went up um, the death slide. Do you remember the death slide? It's just no. a straight drop. Oh, uh, where was it? Some water park yeah, or something? Yeah, no, 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 no. It was a dry thing. You put, went down it in your clothes. Don't you remember death slides? I think they've got rid of them now. They sound dangerous. It's like a straight drop and then it's sort of curved out no, and you I slip along. They were dangerous, Yeah, and they? people get massive yeah, burns on their arms, sorry, yeah. friction they burns. Yeah, it was quite high up, wasn't it? Yeah, and I went all the way up there. Mm. And I think I was with my dad. You find out chicken down. You know that feeling when you've yeah. gone up too high, yeah. then you get the fear and you can't move. Yeah. I had that and I was stuck up there. Paralyzed. People go, go on, just jump, go on, go on. And my just dad gonna die. was he was nice to me, but I could tell he was a little bit ashamed. A bit ashamed of your cowardice. Yeah. Oh, well, right. I was a coward, but then I had to go. <laughs> you coward, you've jumped over the ball, you silly goose. Yeah. yeah, that was when I was playing football. Matthew, there's too many examples of cowardice in your young life. Trevor! Have you ever been stuck up something? I've been stuck everywhere. I've been what, stuck. What, a nighty? You've <laughs> been stuck up a nighty? I've, I've had to be cut out of something once, but what? No, I can't remember. <laughs> this show, hopefully, <laughs> the contributions you make are rubbish. I've been stuck in toilets. I was, uh, stuck up the side of Mont Blanc once in, <laughs> in a. You That's know. a pen. What do you do? <laughs> you can't get stuck up a side of. What do you do? Get trapped on the nib? Mont Blanc is a pen? Yeah, it's a type of pen. Is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a mountain in France. Well, it's both. I don't know which well, you've been first. there. It's a bit stupid to be confused now. Yeah, don't get stuck up something you don't know whether or not it exists, Trevor. No, I was definitely stuck up it, yeah. John Paul Sartre climbing up an idea. Listen, we've got a letter here from Jane in New York. She goes, that's good, isn't it? You have a situation in front of you, you cannot escape it, where you have to choose to kill one, have it off with the other, at which of the act would you perform on Trev Russell? Right, so you've got to decide, Matt. No, there's nothing to do, mate. She's asking you She's what asking you do to Trev. I and me. Kill Trev and have it off with Matt. Why? Because it would humiliate you, Matt, to be had it off with. Trevor would enjoy it, and with killing Trev, I know I'd be doing a great service to the animal kingdom. Would you keep Trevor alive to watch me being raped? Actually, yes. That's, that's <laughs> an awful thing to say <laughs> on morning what radio. What a question, Matt. <laughs> Oh, well, let's have a think. Would I keep <laughs> Trevor alive to watch you no, being forcibly sexed? Yes, I think I would. On a drip. The watching you slowly losing yourself. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do either of those things. I love them both too dearly. Yeah, but a very odd acts. situation where that was the only way out of it. Yeah, come on, I'd just, I'd just reason with the person. Would I'd, you, I'd um, would you, do that for. would you take your own life before Trevor's? Bloody hell, come on, I'm very good at what I do. It would be a shame, wouldn't it? <laughs> for broadcasting. <laughs> What's Trev gonna contribute, realistically? No, absolutely not. I'd say, come on Trev, fall on your sword, mate. <laughs> Don't be so sorry. Well, if you lost, um, your arms. Yes. Right? Yeah, you I've could, lost my arms. I've got no lo arms. You either have no arms or mm. Trev dies. I've got no arms or Trev dies? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'd die for that. I don't want no arms or Trev to die. What an idiot. What an idiot. So vain, they'd rather die than have no arms. <laughs> <laughs> I want no arms. No offence if you've got no arms. Now, <laughs> here's a question here from Jenny from Scotland. She goes, would you describe yourselves as dangerous in any way? Trevor, yes to the animal kingdom, surely. <laughs> if you're a member of any of the Sylvanian families and you find yourself near Trevor Lock, other little animal families are available, he would kick you right to death. So, Trevor, you are dangerous, aren't you? I'm a dangerous driver. Um, I'm not. I'm a very good driver. I don't, I'm not dangerous at all. I'm, I, I leave the gas on sometimes. Yeah. That's about it. 
Yeah, that's dangerous. Okay, go on, Matt. Are you dangerous? Um, I think I could kill a man. You could? Under what circumstances? If I, if they, uh, For a laugh or something. If you're no, a bit bored. Laugh. I think I could. In a war? In a war, definitely. Oh, Matt! You dirty killer. I'm dangerous because of my thought-provoking philosophies. I could probably, you know, crumble down society or something with some of my ideas once I start that cult that we're all starting soon. So, yeah, we are a bit dangerous, Jenny. Trevor leaves the gas on. Matt secretly wants to do murders. And I don't I want to. Want I'm to just saying that, that, that I'm not a pacifist. I am. No, you're not. Oh, no, I'm not, am I? I think that we should learn to control everything. Right, okay, so there's some lovely questions there. Let's listen to, I don't know what we're going to listen to, but we'll tell you just the second we've listened to it. Here it is, though. That was the Stowe Oggies down on the street. And before that, Nirvana with Sliver. So, Trevor, you ain't wrapped up your, uh, Sonic Enigma yet. No, I haven't. Do you want me to wrap it up now? No, um, oh, what I think is, I think it's too, even though we're not here and this is a pre-recorded show, yeah. I think that that's gonna be really hard to get. So do I. I think it's I gonna don't be- I think it's really easy. Let's do another but clue. I think that record is an unusual record. It's a novelty record from the 1960s. Right, do another clue. Do a clue about the name of the person who sang it. There is a crew, right at the end, that's There the is a crew. There, there's a crew. There's a crew. I'm all aboard. Boop, boop. I'm Papa the Sailor Man. <laughs> it's disgusting, Peyton. Trevor, do another clue about the name of the person. Okay. Go on then. Quack, 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 quack. Oh, that's quite a good clue. Do it again. This is a clue for the name of the artist who made Trevor Sonic Enigma. Okay. <laughs> quack, 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 quack. That was Trevor Lock miming drug abuse, and then you know what the second bit was, so that's very funny thing to watch happen in the world. And do the <laughs> clue for the Sonic Enigma. Oh, I'm walking through the park, there's a flamingo, I'm quite hungry, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Oh, it's gone away. He changes every time, and then, and then it whack, he goes at the end, because he's done that again. I was gonna do it, but you jumped in like a pair of boots. <laughs> from a ceiling. <laughs> That's what boots do. <laughs> we jumped in like a boots. pair of boots from a ceiling, you soppy, soppy boy. So, okay, great, great, good, good stuff so far, yeah. Answer that Sonic Enigma if you can, 64046. You've got a question there, have you, Matt, from the website? Question. Got a question here. What does it go like, wise guy? What would you write if you were putting an ad in a personals column? Or what would you write for one another? <laughs> That's bloody funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, who, who asked that question? Oh, come on! All right. Come! Charlotte. Charlotte. From, from Bexhill. Where? Bexhill. Charlotte from what? Bexhill? Yes, yeah, Bexhill. Oh, nice to live there. Right, Trev, what would you write in your own one first? I mind when I'd say, oh, please, please, <laughs> help please, me. please, <laughs> please, <laughs> please <so> Trevor. <laughs> 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 no, I'd say, I'd say, uh, you know, I'm, um, uh, hey, uh, hey, groovy kids, yeah. Okay. I don't know, I wouldn't do it. Hey, guys, <laughs> guys, I don't <laughs> care who you are, where you've been, where you're from, where you please, touch me, touch me on my back. Yeah? Um, uh, do you want an adventure? Um, are That's you? mine! Yeah, I've learned that from you. Come no, on, say it. I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do you it. You can't back out in the middle. You, you can't started. Back out, Trev, in the middle of do a. Do you want an problem. adventure? No, um, I'm, not. I, I'm um, uh, an explorer. Let's <laughs> go up the Amazon. What does Amazon mean, well, Trevor? Exactly. exactly. Leave that to your own imagination. Leave that this to is how he hires his goons. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, that. up the Emerson sounds good. <laughs> That'll be real fun. Why have I got to kill all these mongooses, though, boys? <laughs> so, uh, what about yours, Matt? What would um, you for yourself? Well, obviously I wouldn't. Well, yeah, probably if I was old. Listen, the pair of if I was old, <laughs> used to cruise all over MySpace. Yeah, but MySpace has got no stigma. It's not like an internet dating service. It just... It's a f there's no it's stigma yeah. on MySpace, not yet. And there's no the information on my MySpace about me. There's no real stuff. If you keep stuff. associating MySpace with Trevor Locke, eventually it will be regarded as absolute filth and tit, surely. Uh, what would I, you put I would put, um, I don't know. Come on. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Sell Man, myself. 29, lonely, really, really dull, six person to nag and bore. Sign bet. I'd say, um, I don't know what I'd say. Oh, is this a sex like thing or a dating thing? Dating thing? What do you mean? You don't send them off to get thing. sex. <laughs> That's what you should put. Someone. Is, is this, this a sex thing, thing or a dating thing? thing? Question, question, question. Question. Okay, yeah, get in touch and we'll find out. Perfect. Good. Not bad. Mine is, uh, hello there, you. Bloody hell, life, eh? Look out your window. See life going on. Wanna do a bit of life with me? Wanna try a bit of life with me? Come round. Give us a see cuddle. See what's happened there. What? 
You've been famous now. You don't have to try to pull women anymore. And also, look at your skills. They're all haywire. Hello, <laughs> uh, come over here. Uh, uh, oh no, my precious skills. And my also, precious skills. This is an ad in a magazine, so the intonation doesn't come out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's just it's totally misunderstood. Because it's got to be right. It looks like first. a Tell yourself. Thirty-one-year-old uh, male, long hair. Yeah, um, one dreadlock. Four dreadlocks. Four dreadlocks. Four dreadlocks. Four dreadlocks growing in his mane because he doesn't wash it enough. G S O H. I think that goes. I right. think V G S O H, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I think A W S O H. A. What's Bella. that mean? Award winning. Award winning sense of humour. Yeah, woohoo! Time out, comedian Bella. of the year. Self involved. Self, <laughs> Self congratulatory. B L C. G Q stylish man of the year. Most yeah. Who was it the year before? Um, I believe it was a little fella called Goebbels who used to wear <laughs> a lovely uniform. <laughs> so I've got most Who was it? Man, I don't know. Who else has won that award? Michael Caine won it in the old days. Really? Williams probably has won it, any? No. Carl Brack come third last year, I seem to remember. It's a good award to win. It is a good award to win. GQ, my stylish man of the year, my stylish little What did you get for winning that? Nothing, probably. You have to go award. We're all going, aren't we? How are we? We're all yeah, going. We're all going. When? 6th of September, we're all going to That's the GQ so. Style Awards. Yeah, oh, be good, wouldn't it? What are you gonna wear, not just style awards. I don't know what I'm gonna well, wear. I'm gonna wear. Yeah. I don't We're know. gonna look great at that party. I've got That's nothing to guys. wear, and I've just come back off. You know. We're about to chat people up like about trip about getting selfish some mischief probably, won't he? Right, okay, yeah, so <laughs> I'd say, uh, awards, I've got awards for a lot of different things. Do you, but I'm actually deeply unhappy and alone. Please help. For yeah. God's sake, help me. I might kill myself. Lots of love. Russell, uh, you may know me from shows such as Dance Law Chart, uh, Big Brothers, Big Mouth. <laughs> Bye, I love you! I'd say something like that. Yeah. That'd be tragic, wouldn't You'd it? You'd be inundated. Inundated. Yeah. Oh, the irony. 64046, if you want to enter that, uh, Sonic Enigma that Trev's done. Remember, he done two little clues for that. So we want you to come in here, spend some time with us. Although, ha having heard the way that we seek out dates, you may now want to keep a safe distance. Or you can email us at russell.6music at bbc.co.uk. Send us more questions. What we're going to listen to now, L7, Andre, what do you want to do? Bully me about my pronunciation. Come on, let's listen to L7. That was John Lennon, borrowed time. Listen to Russell Brand on Six Music. We've been answering questions off our website, haven't we? Haven't we, Matt? Yes. Been good in it, Trev? Yes. Nice couple of boys. We're all off on holiday. Well, I'm off to Morocco, Marrakesh. Trev's off to little old town called New York City. Ain't you sunshine? Yes, I am, boy. Trevor <laughs> 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 Locks doing the accent that he uses to get his mate Carl Weathers to do murders. Now, so Carl Weathers is an actor. I who's know, in, he uh, played Predator. Apollo Creed and he was in Predator too, but uh, he'd probably never preyed on animals quite the way that Trevor <laughs> <Yeah>. Locks. <does. laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> cheers, cheers to that. Agent. I'm not going anywhere. I'm stuck in London doing Work. all your dirty work. Just because you've already work. gone there, haven't you? you I went, went to Cornwall. Yeah, I nice Cornwall. Oh, cultural review. Cultural review sighting. Hopefully someone's got Trevor's Sonic Enigma now. They've been un sure they they've been able to unravel his filthy brain funk. Yeah. Okay, so, um, okay, do you want to culturally review Flamingo Mafu? Yes. Go on then, what are you going to, do you want to do a this? jingle for your cultural review? I'll do it Here for it you. I'm doing a cultural review, I'm marching down a Bradhouse Street, I see some culture, I stick it in my gob. <laughs> Burp knob. That's how Matt reviews what things. What a stupid man. Oh, you okay. did a burp during that. People when listening, uh, listen, go into the listen again function and you will hear while I was doing that, Matt actually did a burp. So there you are. Is it a parody or is it a very, very close approximation of what he's like? So come in, what are you culturally reviewing, Matt? Well, we were all there. Yeah. We all went to see the Ron Muick exhibition in, ec in, uh, in Ecuador. Ecuador. <laughs> Ecuador. E Ecubaro. <laughs> oh, Ecuthump, we're looking at Ron Muick and exciting. In Edinburgh. Yes. Oh, Ecuthump, these Ron things Muick. are made of wax. Uh, if you will let me continue. Go on then, culturally reviewing. Ron Muick, which is a hard word to say. Yeah, you're never sure. I've so that's Muick the first downfall. Or Muick. Now, he uh, is a special effects person who moved right. into fine art. What sort of art does he do, Matt? Well, what he makes is uh, sculptures, mate. Well, bad impression-wise, but, but, okay, but we are on radio. I know. Come on then, do it then, tell us what he does. He makes these huge sculptures which are extremely lifelike. Photo, 
No, I haven't. There's loads of spit He's sleuthing around. Let him finish a sentence. All right. There's no spit in my gob. <laughs> this is the most frustrating. Buckets of stuff. I know, stuff. it's because it's not about him, is it? So, yeah. and, and I went there and I saw Russell Brand Woo! from the telly. Brilliant! He was walking around and yeah! he tried it on with a woman. No, I never. There. You did. I wonder what did. was you going on there. You went up to him and went, I'm a security guard. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, he didn't so say that, did he? Did, did, yeah. Trevor oh, goes, I don't like it, it's too disturbing. <laughs> yeah, Trevor got disturbed by these big wax models. And he models. goes, there's proper art downstairs, it's <laughs> like there's gold beneath us, and we're here looking at Weetabix or something. <laughs> he did say that, I'm so really are available, and other precious metals. You did say that, Trevor, you went, there's gold downstairs, we're looking at Weetabix. <laughs> <You got all laughs> yeah, and then didn't when we- like that, though, did I? You were frightened of them then, dummies. I wasn't frightened. When he left that wasn't. room, he never went downstairs, he squirrelled off home. Squirrelled off home, came out, got straight into a taxi home and he was there with his feet up already. Laughing, smoking a cigar, watching a Dukes of Hazard on the telly <laughs> with his trousers down. Um, yeah, so there's huge, like, there's a woman in a bed and her head's about six foot tall, would you say? <laughs> huge. Yeah. And there's a naked, sort of wild, sort of cat weasel old man. Yeah. And, um, there was a lot of immaturity and sniggering from Russell and Trevor <laughs> about the, uh, the willies of the sculptures. I not snigger about, about the willies. Willy <laughs> his willies not very big, is it, man? <laughs> I'm a security guard. I thought he looked like a squid. <laughs> It did not look like a squid, it but looked the, like a willy. And there's a newborn baby that was huge. Yeah, that was giant, that thing, that about was 20 massive. foot long. Massive. Massive. I thought that looked like it had been washed up on a beach somewhere. Trevor thought it did look like it, it had been washed up on a beach it was, it somewhere. Had, it was extremely realistic. And it was an interesting bit where it showed you how he does it with fiberglass and little maquette models and chops it into sections. It's brilliant. But is it art, Matt? No. Well, I, is think, it art? I think it's extremely good craft. Extremely good craft. What is the difference, Trevor, between extremely good craft and art? Opinion. Opinion, that's all it is. Yes. Opinion. There's nothing mm -hmm. that is uh, intrinsically but, artistic. No. I is would rather go God? and see is that. Is it not the presence of being or something? No, it's not. So, no. I would rather go and see that than Tracy Emin's rubbish, self-involved crap. Of <gasps> course. I like of Tracy course. There's genuine ability no, okay. and- Tracy yeah. Emin's cool. No, she's, she's cool. cool. She's, she's a person she that, she, her, her, the first, um, the art of Tracy Emin is her. Yeah, right? it's good to have yourself. She's a, art. yeah, no. but the, the, her so talent, she makes stupid quilts, and she, but she, miss, she misspells she words. She makes stupid right? quilts, and she kicks over bins, listen, and I listen, saw her in the chip might, shop once, spitting. You she's might learn a brilliant something. artist. You she's don't know anything about artist. her. I know lots about her. I am an artist. What one of her seminal works? can you know? That tent thing with the name of everyone she slept with, them neon sign things, she Brilliant. Well, I think she's overrated. But because what annoys me about her is she um, darns these quilts with words on it that's mm. stuff from her life, right? But she and there's loads of spelling mistakes in it, and I don't think that she. I think she does that. She, oh yeah, I'm Tracy Emin. I'll, I'll misspell st stuff. That'll make it look edgy. I think she could have checked out the spelling. <laughs> He's irritated. It's that she antic. She's made. It's, it's a creation. It's a. Well, that's what art is. Art is a creation. No, her mate. personality. She's an idiot. You can't go bleeding hard. No, Michael Angelo should have done that dinkle bigger or made them pics more perfect or let, let, let Michael's legs look a bit less camp or David's legs look less gauche. You know. Oh, well, I don't want to attack her so much because uh, I just think that Ron oh, Merck thing, it's like so brilliant the way he's it's done it. The, the colour in the veins, the yeah. hairs that he's implanted, every single hair. They use horse hair on the oversized models because it's the horse limp. hair. Yeah, if you read the things in that thing, Those things were rubbish. scuttling around stupid. trying to pull women. <laughs> I was not scuttling. And it was uncanny was as well. It was a little bit unheimlich. Yeah. Little bit. Yeah. Like, do you remember that little miniature Kevin Heldon hanging on the wall? Yeah, a little guy, a little baby with yeah. a freaky face. I liked that guy. Yeah. And I like them two little old ladies that were looking at yeah. funny So they look like a photograph. Is, it, it's so amazing. It looks completely realistic. But they're about nine inches high, these little old ladies. I thought I saw that woman move as well. And yeah. so kept Helen, kept thinking, thinking, Helen thought she saw her toe move. Helen, who works with us, thought she saw someone's toe move. Okay, well, that's a, so in short, it, you'd think there's no I think that should come to London at some point, and I'd really recommend way. people to go because it's art that's spectacle. You can go and think, oh, wow, look at that. That's amazing. Not just go, well, I think what she's trying to say here is just a bit of a slag. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? What? Attacking Tracy Emin. I didn't say it was about Tracy Emin. Why are you saying Tracy Emin? Why are you saying Tracy Emin? Why are you saying Tracy Emin? You you it. Because she's the only artist so you we've been talking her about. Being a slag. And you're the only artist. Like that's why he likes it. That's why he likes it. The only female artist who is prominent in this conversation. I love Tracy Emin and I think she's a great woman and you two are misogynists. Now what shall we listen to now? I just remember she's- no. Go on. What are we listening to? The Raconteurs. The Raconteurs. Hands, let's listen to them. Let's listen to the guys play. 
That were the fucking tours with the sun called hands. You right, Trev? Yeah, I'm alright. I'm a bit ill, not very well. I'm sorry, got a headache. Yeah, it's Russell Brand's music. That was Trevor Locke's voice. You're right, Matt Morgan. I think you should start that one again because I did burp. And yeah, I think no, we're leaving the burp in. And we're leaving the burp in. about don't my medical burp. well-being. I don't so want to do what? That that's it. That was back into his hands. We're leaving in Matt's burp, and we're leaving in Trevor's complaints about his medical well-being. What question do you want to uh, do now? Oh, uh, this is a question here from. Uh, Lindsay yes. Millward. Lindsay Millward, yes. She Burke says, Matt Morgan, yes. If you were able to live the rest of your life at one age, what would it be? Seven! I'd be seven years That's old. That's stupid, you can't do anything. Anything. Yeah, but you're innocent. You don't want to go around having it off and So, so do you think that seven. psychologically you want to return to innocence after all the debauchery? Yes, psychologically I would like to return to innocence. An innocent time, childhood when I was unmarred, unsullied, just a But frustrating, you can't life. drive a car. Well, you can't drive a car anyway, can you? Can't drive a car he now. He's basically seven now, Matt, that's he what he's saying. Yeah. So, really, he just wants to be like he is now, but What's without the raging libido. <laughs> yeah, seven, and then... Well, always seven. Always seven. Just in an eternal, perpetual childhood, free of the desires of man, the constructed desires, or the, the raging animal desires that chain us. Trevor! Oh, Turn no, your no, phone no, off, Trev! Well, that's so unprofessional. Well, so I have my phone off. Both of you have them on. Well done, Matt. You it's are a, a shining person, example to us all. Um, Trev, what, what age would you be, you little perfect? Now, I think I'm perfect as I am, and I don't want ever, you know. So get any older. That's You're tragic. already harder yeah. than, <laughs> than you were a minute ago now. Yeah. Or just stay this age. Yeah, I think so. It's just about as. Yeah. You're ridden with diseases. What about you? Well, he's, not, he's got a cold. <laughs> um, sort of I would cold. be. What am I now? 29. I reckon I'd be. Trouser cold. Last year. 28. Is it 28? Because. Right. Last year was good, was it? No, I just think. Well, 29's a bit too old because I'm nearly 30. So I'll be 28. But there's no point in going backwards, mate. Well, you remember when you're, like, people go, oh, I want to be 21. 21's rubbish. 21 is rubbish. You can't get a good job. You can't really, you don't know what yeah, you're you doing. Yeah, you don't know anything about you anything. Don't know, you, when you're 21, you think, yeah, I know everything. And then when you're about 28, you look back and think, I knew I nothing. nothing. I was the silly sort of yeah. Here's a thought. Just think when we're about 40, we'll look back at us now and say, what the hell were we doing on that Absolutely, radio show? Absolutely, I reckon, Absolutely. Yeah. What yeah. was that radio Completely. show about? We were idiots <laughs> then! <laughs> We, we probably might, will. We? Yeah, I think that every Monday morning, to be honest. <laughs> what was this radio show about well, when you're cutting the podcast? Yeah. Podcast number two at the charts where it quite rightly belongs. Turn off your phone, Trevor! So, um, yeah. Matthew, was that your phone? No, it wasn't my phone. Trevor, my phone turn off your phone, Trevor. Meeting. Eat your fudge. I'm a professional. Where's my fudge? So, um, Matthew. So, seven year old. You want to be 28. Uh, Trevor's age now, year old, and, uh, 28 year old. So, what would we do? We wouldn't get on very well. On. Our radio show would be rubbish. <laughs> I'd just be asking, you all right, Russell? And you'd be all teary. <laughs> oh, I'm Jowls, because I'm not happy at all. <laughs> Where's my dad gone? <laughs> It'd be like that, wouldn't it, for hours? Yeah. Hour after hour. That'd be oh, essentially oh. that now, and it would just be a little bit suppressed. Any more questions? You've got a question. I've got a question, and it's from the same woman. She keeps ri ringing well, in. She's running she? the show. Who is it? Winkia? It's from, uh, no, Lindsay Millwood from Flint in North Wales. She's running now. She's the chuckling puppeteer behind us, guys. If you were an animal, what animal would you be, and why? Um, I would be a very lovely chimp, because I just like the way those guys carry on. One with a nappy on. Yeah, a chimp wearing a nappy, <laughs> smoking fags on a, like, a Spanish beach. And you can ride a dog when you're a chimp. You can ride a dog like, like a, horse. a horse. Brilliant. And have Put a top hat. hat. Poop on it, the dog's back. Have it off with the dog. You're uh, a chimp. Yeah. No one's gonna judge no you. No one's gonna put any rules on you. No, I you're a chimp. Do you? Like, they're just glad you're wearing the nappy. What about you, Matt? What are you gonna be? I'd be, um, I was just about to say I'd be like a panther, a black oh. panther. Oh, but, of well, I'd be a, a, a bird of prey, I was gonna say. I'd be a, a, a big cat, like a lion. Why? Just because they're good. But then I think oh, it'd be frustrating to have paws instead of hands. You would. You'd be looking feel like a big paws. Imagine That's why I'm a monkey. I can still do everything. Yeah, no, I, I might be a monkey yeah. then. No, I, I don't think know. it's because you're you're an animal, so you'd have that animal's life. It wouldn't be like you'd be an animal you're living your life. You're constantly going, oh God, I want to go to Tesco's. <laughs> <laughs> I want to listen to our maiden. I just have a job in the next room at Bruce Dickinson. I'm bored. Let me at him. Let me at him. What do you want to be, Trev? I think I'd like to be one of those pink dolphins they have in the Amazon jungle. They don't have them. There's no such thing. Pink dolphins pink in the jungle. Yeah, in the jungle. Pink, pink on land. No. In the, in the the river. River. oxygen The Amazon from. jungle. Why is it called the Amazon jungle? Because the biggest river in the world, the Amazon, runs through <laughs> it. Dolphins <laughs> are not freshwater I animals. went to Peru. I got What's a massage of a blind man. What is the point? That's, That's a good point. point. That's a good point. Why do you bother, Trevor? Why don't you just get out? Going I'm going. Pink dolphins. Why do you want to be a pink dolphin? No, don't go, Trevor. I love you. Why do I want to be a pink dolphin? 
a dolphin. They're quite intelligent. The only reason he wants to be a pink oh, dolphin Jesus is because secretly he wants to have sex with other dolphins. Why don't you just do it now, Trev? They're all pink. Why don't you just go on one of those holidays we now and hang on to his dolphins, dolphins, like dolphins. All my friends are pink. You my mum and daddy were pink. My uncles were pink. All Ugh. the friends I know are pink. You dirty I know pink. you get caught up in a tuna racist net. Racist sex no dolphin. tuna nets up those rivers. Yeah, get it's a tuna net and catch him up real good. Why do you spread hatred? Why can't we love each other? It's not. It's not a laugh to spread hatred. Actually, yeah, I think man. I might be a bird now. Cause Come and be a dolphin no, you can't, with me. So you're a monkey I'm an with eagle. me. Come and be a dolphin. <laughs> you're a monkey with me. We're monkeys <laughs> together. Come on, Matt. Hey, we'd live together, wouldn't we? You'd be in the trees and yeah. you'd see me and you'd go, oh, look, there's that pink dolphin. I'd do you in your blowhole, mate. I'd clog it up. We'd put a coconut in there. We'd put a coconut down your blowhole, Trev. <laughs> Eat your coconut. Put yeah, it actually, down your blowhole. You could help us across the river. Yeah. I wouldn't, though, would I? But when we I get to the other side, we'll kick his little bottle. Whatever then we kick your beak in. Do dolphins have beaks? I can never tell anymore. It looks like a beak. <laughs> looks a bit like a beak. What a radio show it's been! You probably now know the answer to, uh, Trevor's Sonic Enigma. You've worked that out. And you've also worked out that Matt is not qualified to do cultural reviews or reviewing of any kind except perhaps his own farts. I told him one earlier that smelt like my back was on fire. You shouldn't be able to review. What <laughs> earth are you talking about? <laughs> cultural, your the cultural, cultural review, reviews, uh, mate. Your cultural reviews is what I'm talking about, mate. Well, do you remember about. when I used to go to the opera and stuff? When yeah. you used to go to the opera. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, for my cultural reviews. you were a reviews. real toff, weren't you? <laughs> you were a proper toff. Let him in, let him take over the world. I've reviewed big portions of this country. Uh, yeah, you have. Yeah. Scotland, you went, oh, uh, 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 all right, from your review. Everything's food to him, isn't it? Yeah, poor, everything's grub. That's because he's like, uh, from the world of Comedia dell'arte, he's them simple ones that just want nosh all the time. When he, when he reviewed, what? that's a type of theatre, it's <laughs> an archetype. When he, um, when he reviewed Cornwall, he went, I went round on an horse, it was like a big coward. When he reviewed Scotland, so he very went, it smells funny. <laughs> that's his reviews of half the bloody There's nation. There's much more to it than that. It was not, that was exactly, that was all you came up it with. It smells funny, they dress funny. That's I did not, so they dress in national costume, which I thought was what? Go weird. to RussellBrand.tv if you want to know where me and Trevor de Cockadee Lockadee are touring. Also, we'll be doing six music shows from them areas when it's on a Sunday, so you might be able to come down to the studio, hang out with us. Also, if you're on that uh, Russell Brand fan site, if you're one of them people who uses that, I really loves you. I love a lot of you. I really, really do. I send you actual love. Why are you bothered by me sending love to people on that fan site? No, I think it's Russell fine. Russell Brand fan, fine. fan site. If you're one of my MySpace friends i don't love you but i like you a lot it's nice my space friends Brutal. oh yeah my my space friends i love my my space friends i don't no. reply to many messages anymore because i simply forget because you'll only use my space to cruise if you're a good looking woman to cruise do do feel free to contact any of us on MySpace if you're an attractive woman. If not, you're probably wasting your time. So, uh, yeah, go to RussellBrand.tv, have a look at things. What a lovely show it's been. If you've not worked it out by now, this was a pre-recorded show. Trevor's Sonic Enigma. What was it, Trev? What was the Sonic Enigma? It was by a young man called Charlie Drake, and it was My Boomerang Won't Come Back. My Boomerang Won't Come Back. So, thanks very much for listening to our show. Trevor's in New York. He's an alien. He's a little alien. He's an English. <laughs> Englishman in New York. That's what Matt Morgan thought that song was actually Never about. Never thought that. A little alien. If Never it was about E.T. doing a spin-off TV series. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an alien. I'm a little alien. I'm an Englishman <laughs> in New York. <laughs> what a silly sod. Um, okay, Sweet. right, so we're gonna listen to Charlie Drake. My boomerang won't come back. There'll be next week. It's gonna be a fantastic It'll show. Live. We'll get guests in. We'll be live. out here. We'll be people here. It's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> I think we're gonna reform N.W.A. and have them live in the studio. Not easy. God rest his soul. This is me, my boomerang, when I'm back.